Welcome, everybody, to the Dolmenwood OSE game. Uh, we are playing episode 11. I am your host, as always, John. I'm the referee of the game uh, going around the horn. We have Mike playing Alfric, the magic user. Uh, David is dead to us, uh, has some previous engagements, will not be joining us tonight. Usually plays Snell the Hunter. Uh, we will feel his loss. Uh, Matt is playing Halifax Swinney the Knight. And Ted is playing Argus the Fighter. Uh, so we are in the middle of Winter's Daughter, and they are in uh, deep within the tomb of Sir Chide. Uh, last session, I believe um, you guys had, we finished up basically in the tomb itself where you had met the ghost of Sir Chide who begged you to take the ring uh, that was lying, in his, uh, lying on his corpse in his coffer and uh, take it to his lady love uh, somewhere uh, in the cold fairy realm of Phrygia where she is being held prisoner. So I, if I remember correctly, we left off where uh, you guys were just, uh, you had just exited that chamber and you were deciding what to do next. Is that correct? It's true. I, I, I can't remember like if we um, gathered any more of the weapons from, there was a statuary hall around to the, around to the left. There was, yeah. Um, that was uh that was under consideration um uh one one thing that uh crossed halifax's mind is when we were talking to him he seemed kind of surprised that uh, to hear about his parents skeletons that were kind of like dancing around and looping through the the uh, the maze there yes they were yeah his mom and dad right. and um halifax started thinking like you know what? Maybe we could consider like this is pretty weird, but it's not as cold outside, or it's not as cold in here as it is outside. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a place to get some rest that won't kill Argus. Interesting. Like, what are you saying? Tried, tried seems to be on our side. Like he he's so far he's acting like. An ally. He's given us stuff. He hasn't cared if we take if, if taken anything. Um. Uh. He's he you know doesn't see these weird skeletons that have been like traipsing around protecting everything. Maybe we have an ally here. Maybe we can try to heal up a little bit. It's it's kind of crazy talk. I know, but. Well, can, uh, on the subject of healing, where did you guys leave my near corpse? <laughs> You're like at minus two to hit and minus two to all saves because we yeah, used I, yeah, did, did I, you roll for the balsam? I believe I did. I think I got a one. Got one. Didn't I do bad? Yeah. You did bad. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> so an expensive yeah, one. Well, so that didn't actually raise me to consciousness then. Well, I guess it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes like negative two, but that just affects the. Oh, you get resets. It resets down to zero, right? Like every time you get hit, you're yeah. at zero for that intense purpose. You don't go down to negative nine, right? To then heal right. from negative nine. So no. I'm at one. You're you're at one hit point, but you have minus two to AC and saves because of the balsam, um, because you have so Until much in your sleep, right? What I'm sorry. Until yeah, yeah. sleep. That's correct. Yeah. So. so you... You would you would left Argus back on the steps, I believe, right? Yeah, to okay. the entrance. I, that's what I thought. I wanted to confirm it. Yeah. Um, so it was a little hard to hear the video from last week when I missed it. So I'm sitting there on the steps. I'm concussed. The effects of which I don't know yet. Is that right, John? That's you correct. Yeah. Well, you just don't know when it's going to end. Right. Uh, I'm concussed. I have one hit point, uh, and uh, I'm extremely jittery, and probably my eyeballs spinning around in the socket from all the Brewmaster's balsam I've ingested or had introduced into my open gaping wounds or whatever. Uh, yeah. So, are you guys coming back to get me, or do I have to w stumble through? No, you're <laughs> with us, dude. You're in that NPC shield. Yeah, like we, I think we have kind of like a clear path to you, like back and forth along that um, statuary side. Yes. Do okay, either of so you have a map? 
Uh, yes. Okay, so just just you know, you can basically where you guys are now is um, you are in the um, the Hall of Hounds, right? So you're in that long hallway. Oh, you want to be? Yeah, you can that be there. Yeah, I, I assume you had just stepped out of the tomb, right? Which is which is there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we we've kind of made a clear path. This yeah. Way. You have. So if yes, I wander yeah. through there, like following your footsteps and looking for you, and I see, oh wow, that's a lot of interesting statues with weapons. Oh, that's some weird looking mold. Oh, here's a door. Oh, hey, here they are. Hey, hey guys. Yeah. So I you can, can be in that room. You okay, can. Great. Yes. Now, Argus, when you do that, um, as you kind of yeah. stumble your way to the east and make your way through, um, uh, you notice first of all that the mirror in the circular chamber directly to the east of where you were sitting has been turned over yep. and is facing the wall, um, which is a rather strange. And then following yeah. the the trail through the dust as well, you come into the statue room and see all these lovely weapons that are in the grips of these of these statue of these footmen. Yep. Um, and as you're kind of moving through, you have to actually kind of put your arm out as you kind of get like a dizzy spell and you kind of hold your your hand to your head. You're like, oh god, like you know, it's like it's you know, oh. and you, you cough a little bit as well, or just like, oh, like I don't feel right, you know. Um, uh, like a wave of nausea sort of rolls through you as well. And you kind of takes a while to get your bearings. And you do realize that um, uh, y y your body is really, really wrecked. Um, it's not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So you, um, uh, you are concussed, which basically means um, you don't know how long it's going to last, but in mechanical terms, it means that you always go last in initiative, no matter what. Mm. Oh, so <laughs> like, even if we win, like, all of us would go, then all the bad guys would go. And then Ted goes. Then Ted would go. That's correct, yeah. That's yeah. bad. It just gives me an opportunity to respond to threats. That's awesome. That's exactly right. You get to hear what everyone else is doing and, and, and react appropriately. That's great. I love it. Okay. Ted, Ted is a, a, a half half full kind of guy. <laughs> Glass half full. I'm half full of Blue Buster's Balsam and I'm losing my mind. He's only half concussed. Right. So you guys can, so Elfric and Halifax, you can easily hear Argus like stumbling his way in his, uh, what are you, you're wearing plate, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just Blankety. banging his way through the hallway. Oh and then he comes Blank. out and he Blank. comes out from that Eastern corridor um, and basically slams up against one of those uh, pillars with the scenes of the, Crusades against the um, frost elves, and just like collapses in a heap, and and now he's with so, you guys. So one thing I don't remember from the video, uh, I know that the statuary room with the weapons had a lot of mold in it. It did, yes. Pretty careful to avoid, which is I think sounded really smart. Was there mold beyond that? No. Okay. Um, and much so, of that much of that mold has been actually um, ex has been removed thanks to uh, Halifax's uh, brilliant idea. Okay. Okay, so the room here with the the Hall of Hounds, you called it, mm -hmm. it, it, could be actually a safe place to sleep, is what it looks like. Or is this I'm where the you guys are? I mean, how long have we been adventuring, John? It's um all day at this point. It's been a number of turns, but not enough to go through a whole thing of lamp oil, right? That's we have true. probably six or seven turns left on our lamp. That's oh. that sounds like where I left off. I think we had Here's my sheet. Uh I okay. can tell you, actually. Yeah, good. Ba, 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 ba. Last note I had said seven turns on the land. That is exactly right. Yes. And so you've had um six, twelve plus five, seventeen turns. With uh, that's not that's not how long you've been down here, but that's how but it's probably pretty close actually. Um that's how many that's how long you've had the lantern lit. Oh, so John, I guess one other factor in this decision, mm -hmm. looking around that, I mean, we've been focused on Sir Chide the whole time that we were in there talking to him and the tomb and everything, mm -hmm. but uh, around that room did, yeah. and up on the ceiling, on the walls and everything, are there any signs of uh, those holes that the worms came through? Like if, if there's like entrance in here for those kind of things, then it would not be. Are you talking about the tomb itself or in the Hall of Hounds? Uh, in the tomb itself, like the Hall of Hounds, those 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 ghosts, those flying ghosts, can or the skeletons can still go through. But in here, in this room with Chide, he's ne he said he's never seen those guys. He seems like he would know his parents, right? Or at least know if skeletons go through. So you want to sleep in the actual tomb with Ch Yeah, because he seems like a cool dude. You should probably That's ask permission. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Wait, can I just say from like a thematic point, right? We did like the whole 
like really like heart wrenching. Guy holds up his hand. He's like, "Yes, reunite me with my lost love." Five minutes later, we're gonna be like, "Dude, can we crash on your couch?" <laughs> like, seriously? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I think I, I think there's a compelling argument I know it makes there. Like, sense, yeah. but it's yeah. just not cool, it's cool man. To be fair, Mike, you were Dude. doing the exact same thing last session. Where you're like, "So, what does the body got on him?" <laughs> You guys are all so mercenary. <laughs> These I got, man, they're, they're sweet. Yeah, they are sweet. They got those owls on them where the amethyst eyes. They're they're dope looking. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. Like you know, we you know check it out with him first. If it looks <laughs> safe in here, it's a door that can close. You go talk yeah, to him, man. I don't want I don't want to be that guy. You go talk to him. You go yeah, mooch I, and sleep on his couch and see if that's cool. Okay, well, for, yeah. So, John, are there are there any signs of? Uh, you know, holes in the floor, ceiling, or walls, or anything where those uh, slugs, those worms. Yeah. Uh, no, not not here in the Hall of Hounds. Right. Like you, you, you are not in the tomb. Like the tomb has been closed, right? So oh, when it, we left, it closed. Yeah, like he, you know, he did his last crusade. Like, be well, friends. You know, and then, oh, okay. then you were like, okay, let's talk. So I mean, <laughs> so that, 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 it doesn't mean you can't. <laughs> yeah, you can go. You can go knock on the door. Or you or open the door again. You know, you open it the first. You know, so right. You know, when the doors close, it's like. It's very solid because those doors have those gigantic metal chains that that connect to the collars of the two stone hounds, you know, with their their vicious growls, you know. So it's it's not like you're swinging open a screen door, you know. You know, do the chains like magically like go back and like does it look like it did before? It's not magic, you know, but it, it but it opened magically whenever you said the, the the names of the two hounds. Oh, okay, okay. Right? So we we know the uh, you know the password like the supermarket yeah. door open. Right, exactly. <laughs> In so many words, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah so, so you do not remember seeing any holes in the ceiling when you were in the tomb last time. Um, you do remember that he was standing in front of a portrait uh, that you didn't really investigate that much, um, and that there was also some very, uh, although I, I may not have mentioned them actually when you were in the room, some uh, floor-standing silver candlesticks that were actually around as well. They were they were tarnished and blotchy, but they did 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 they did look rather valuable. It might be worth going back in the room themselves. I'm just saying. You spoke to the guy, and now you want to go back in and rob his tomb? No, no, no. He was very like giving with stuff. He was like, "Yeah, oh, you want this? I don't need it. I'm dead." We did not. We did not take. We did not take anything without permission. That is true. Totally cool. That is true. Yeah. So. I, okay, so you want to go back in and can I crash in your couch and may I have that lamp? That's <laughs> that's nice. It really ties the room together. You know? Maybe not ask for both things at once. Maybe like ask for one thing, see how it goes. You know, I don't okay. want to be too pushy. You could guess, tidy up a little bit. Oh, maybe do do, do it or don't talk. Don't talk about it forever. What are you guys gonna do? Right, yeah, okay, let's um, uh, seriously, so, dude. If you're gonna do it, go do it. You know? Okay, we go back. We we go back in. He calls the names uh, Chater and Flager. Uh, Chater, Flager. Go back in. Go back um, in. He's he's once again standing, and he turns around slowly from gazing at his his lost love. You have returned, yet I am not joined with my fair maiden. Your quest is not achieved. What further can I assist you with, friends? It is true, good sir knight. Uh, we we have uh, come upon come upon our our brave companion here, who is gravely, gravely injured, and um, uh, we beseech upon you: is there a chance to stay here just briefly, recoup, uh, possibly bring him back uh, a little bit to uh, greater health, so that we can uh, better. Uh, Better achieve this uh, uh, this uh, this goal that we have of reuniting you with our with your love. Uh, I would hate to to fail for for lack of a simple simple bit of rest. But there's nothing to fear in my tomb. You may rest where you where you wish. If it is here, that is well. But I can assure you, there are no dangers within my tomb. It is a peaceful place. Oh. But do as you will. I will not disturb your rest. Only be be about 
your quest as soon as you possibly can. Fine. You got it, Matt. Let's just camp. <laughs> Ted's still going to lose a point, a hit point anyway. It doesn't matter. He could be staying at the Holiday Inn and he's still going to lose a hit point. <laughs> That's true. It, why, why, why is that going to happen? Why is that a foregone conclusion, everybody? <laughs> amazing amazing that's awesome. yeah that's awesome. well done like going to happen yeah and for the record we did not know ted had that card <laughs> it's good stuff good well stuff. played sir well played well played that means i don't have to add a graphic for this video which is amazing you, you just saved me some time <laughs> Nice. All right, let's set, let's set up tent. Let's or set up camp. I say we still do tents and like the whole rigmarole and like all the rest of it. I mean, we don't have and any yeah, wood to every, burn. Everything we can do to help uh, Con Five over here uh, get a better night's sleep. Okay, sure. So okay, he um tried to be the one to tell us a cool story. All the tents and all the sleeping bags are back at the campsite. Oh well, then just flop onto the cold stone ground. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. <laughs> You can only your your chances can only be so low, anyways, right? There's plenty of daylight. <laughs> you know, we could go get all the stuff and come back and sleep in the. Why don't we night. just cuddle? Just let's just spoon. Come here. All right. So it's it's a rather macabre scene. There is the open tomb of Sir Chide with his corpse, with his skeleton lying within, with the shredded remains of his armor. Sir Chide himself, a ghostly, transparent, <laughs> bluish form, yeah. um, is say. just sort of he's got a you know he's got his hands on his ghostly blade just kind of standing next to the portrait on the far end, just sort of watching you be musically as you sort of set up, you know, um, with a small smile on his face. Uh, but yeah, it's rather cold and musty in here, but um, let's see. So what do we got? We've got uh, no fire. Is, no. So, and I'm just trying to remember the, the, the office that we came in didn't have a fireplace, right? Or any kind of brazier or way to light a fire. The, the the chapel of uh, Saint Sedge, I think, didn't mm -hmm. have any place to light a fire. Just had that freaky candle. Um, did any of the rooms have any place to light a fire? I don't think they did. Mm -hmm. I don't remember uh, seeing anything like that. I yeah. don't believe so. So, uh. It, I, I mean, I it, it's it would, there's no way that you would actually be able to, yeah, to light like a controlled fire here with, and have it vent correctly if you wanted. Um, there is no venting yeah. here. Uh, yeah. If you if you want the doors closed, yeah. which is sort of the whole point, right? We could probably if we lit it near the wormhole, we could. That would probably be enough of a draft there. But, uh, but also, worms can come through the wormhole too. Oh, did <laughs> we? <kill them> all? <laughs> well, Say, okay. You know. Um. So the portrait itself is a hanging portrait. It's obviously of um, his lady, long flowing blonde hair, white robe, brow upon her star, uh, uh, star upon her brow. Um, uh, interestingly, though, you see that it's depicted with her standing amidst a stone circle, circle of dolmens, which looks uh, surprisingly uh, exactly like the ring that is outside the tomb itself. Um, the portrait itself is grimed with dust, very old, slightly damp. And this uh, tomb is supposedly where he met her, right? It, it's in the place where he met her. Yeah, yeah. So, right, right, I right. mean, it, obviously the tomb didn't exist. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is. Right. Yeah, and then the candlesticks um, are. Uh, how many are there? Two, I think. Um. They're four feet tall, tarnished and blotchy um, from being entombed for so long. But they look like if you cleaned them up, that they'd probably be worth about 200 gold each. But they are rather like large and bulky. So uh, the portrait, by the way, is also worth a good chunk of money, obviously, uh, if restored. Much, mm -hmm. much more than the silver candlesticks. Argus I think is we, we have to I think we should purge his ghost to go on to his great reward before we start looting this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it doesn't. That's uh, yeah. It seems like a bit much, especially. Gentlemanly way of doing. I'm just, I'm just dangling in front of you. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, gonna take your picture of your girlfriend. Here's, here's the. So Argus is like scratching his head, and he's like, "Look, I, I know I'm a little muddled right now, but why are we sleeping here? Like, why don't we just leave? You got the ring. 
Well, so let's he- go back to town. I, 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 we can't leave yet. We're, we're, we're not finished. I've got, I've got to get this down um, below to, to our, our lady. His, his. No, you don't. What are no, you, you talking don't. about? What are you talking? We've just, we've just, we've just promised to him, and this is, this is, you know, absolutely what must happen. No, why, why you gotta do that? I mean, let me rephrase it. Why you gotta do it right now? Like, we could go home. We could have a hot bath. There could be food. I could rest. Then, when we're all feeling better, then we could go do something like the idiotic act of going into fairy. But why would we do that right this? Minute. Why not? What? Let's go back. Let's go back to Prigwort. The, the risk of losing that ring on the way back. It's a perilous, perilous. It's not that close, perilous. but still, uh, look, still, the, the cha- I wait, there's a chair. <laughs> it's not that perilous. Are you you having that conversation quietly? I assume, like not within. Uh, well, Argus did not think of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is a little touched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Sir so Chai's like this guy, like he's dead. That's a dead body. You want me to sleep next to the? He, no offense, but he's dead. We 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 take Master the time Sweeney. to fill him in. We take the time to fill him in and go. There are doorways into fairy in the basement of this tomb. We've discovered them already. Okay, Sir Hyde the undead hero of, of Dolmenwood would like us to go bring that ring to his ex-girlfriend so that they can be together again. He waited Sir Chide, years. Argus, Argus the concussed? Argus the concussed? Sir Chide. <laughs> can he wait another day? Maybe two? I mean, he's waited 700 years. We don't have to do it right this minute. Let's, come on, Allie. Think tactically here. I so, I do a long play the long game, man. Uh, so you know you're hot. But... Hold on, hold on. Uh, if you're thinking, Ted, about tactically about like your your ability to actually get a good rest, you actually have, assuming that there's no danger here in the tomb, you actually have a very good chance of resting comfortably because you basically would have the ideal. You don't have the um the campfire and the bedrolls and the tents, but that's that's for sleeping in the wild. You're not in the wild. You're in a dungeon. So um basically the the environment itself is controlled. And so I basically would have you, I would look at the conditions that are based upon summer, which is like the best season, right? right. Um, and the vast majority of the time for resting, um, you guys basically got dumped in when we when we rolled for the random season and you started with winter. That was, that's like the roughest time for making checks. Um, yeah, and under, under ideal situation, under ideal weather conditions, which you are in right now underground, um, there is no need to make a check, uh, check. Everyone gets a good night's rest. No, I, I understood that, although I'm glad to have it clarified, because it was what I suspected, is that we'd be fine. It's more like, and Matt, plug your ears, like, I, I'm i trying to convince Hallie to not just go down to Fairy <laughs> Ring. I think we should go back and get our money from Druge. I would like some experience points. Right, but he, oh, hey, fair hey, enough, yeah. I, I just want to make it, I want to make it clear, though, that the deal was, it's like, it's not like you show him the ring and he gives you money, then you get to take the ring later. To go, you know, once you give him the well, ring, I, he has the ring. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Got that. I got that. Yeah. But really, I'm also trying to just play Argus. In no, yeah, of, sure. Of course. I just want to make sure that like, you're, you're, uh, you're arguing in good faith. Yeah. Next to this corpse, when I could sleep in a bed and have beer and things. Mm. You know, I mean. Uh, aren't you, aren't you lawful though? You, you act, I'm the neutral one. I'm the amoral bastard. You're supposed to be the one. <laughs> We are we have to do the good thing. I am being lawful. We took coin from Druge, man. No, we didn't. Oh, we took 50. Yeah, we, did. we took a 50 gold piece advance. As far as I'm concerned, we have a binding contract with Druge that we even Druge, even Druge didn't feel it that way. Druge was like, here's 50 gold. Maybe this will help you out. If you guys manage to make it back, which I kind of doubt, I would be happy to purchase that ring. From you. <laughs> it was never like a, it was never like a, you guys are going to do this for me. Or, no, the one thing <laughs> that I would say is that he gave us that very expensive spell scroll. Yeah. I think we should really hold off on using it unless we're going to give him the ring. I, that, that's me, and I'm amoral as hell, dude. So I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to sit here and I'll chat with him around the campfire and kind of be like, look, every once in a while you get an opportunity to do something bigger than yourself. 
that poor bastard has been standing here in this big dark room for 700 years waiting for his girlfriend. Come on, have a heart. <laughs> you know? Wow, you you're listening to her for so long before you really start to lose your bananas, right? So let's 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 help him out. Can I have a heart next week? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen your constitution? I have it's a very humongous unlikely. head. I have a huge head injury, you know? Like I'm I'm miserable. I don't know how long it's going to take to get over this. I think it's insane to go into fairy right now. Unless you've got some magic way of restoring me to health. The very best thing we can do is get you to rest. I have like this, I mean, I'm, I'm projecting here, but for, just from what I understand so far, I have this like magnetic pull to get that ring to that lady. Yeah, no, I understand. That's all I've been thinking about. Yeah. And there's like every step in the wrong direction is going to feel harder and harder. Um, it's it feels a little weird to suggest delaying it a bit, but he thinks that that's the best way. Like if you get, a, he thinks that'll make you a little might help get a you good a night's sleep, right? Like clear your head, whatever. One you might feel a little bit better. You know, a little more health, a little more rest might help us achieve the goal of getting the ring hey argus how would you like a totally normal but well-made warhammer shaped like a war pig how would you like that oh (laughs) you like well (laughs) (laughs) or a spear with like serrated edges Mm. I'm actually, a, you know, I, I'm a spear user and a mace user. Those are the two weapons I carry. A spear well, sure we have mace. we have good news <laughs> for you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Here's I got an idea. Keeping in character, Argus uh, uh, will you know rub his face and uh, like hold his aching head and 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 turn to Sir Chai, who presumably is standing there, sort of staring at us somewhat bemusedly. Yes, and uh, you know, my lord. There's a chapel to Saint Sedge over there. Is he your patron saint, or uh, indeed? Because I, I noticed great power resides in that place. We lit the candle to the saint, and the, a wind filled the hall. Um, I thought perhaps I could go pray for guidance from the saint. Of course, uh, in, anyone of good faith is allowed into the chapel. All right. So then my question for you, John, is um, I know we got the, like that little prayer book and the wafers and stuff. Is that enough to do a proper like prayer to a saint, you know, uh, or do you need like sacramental wine or the sacramental, you know, sacred herb or no, something? You, like? you, you pray however you, whatever your personal tastes are for praying to the saints. All right. I'm going to go, un- I'm going to unpack the prayer book and the wafers and, you know, I'm going to go have myself a ceremony and. We'll see how he feels because I think there's something magic about that candle, about that that ch- chapel. So I want to go in there and you know okay. maybe I'll some kind of vision or guidance or something because this say, whole uh, thing about the fairy seems really dodgy to me. I I, I uh, Halifax wouldn't let him go by himself. Right, he's, so worried. he's worried about him. He's like yeah, he can barely stand with up. Me. You know, you've got you need guidance as much as I do. I think. All right, so here's the deal. I'm going to say that. Everything, the conversation, the setting up camp, and the going back to the chapel is all going to take three turns. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Turns are what? Um, Ten minutes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is before I settle down for bed tonight. You know, I'll go yeah. and I'll stand my spear up and kneel and pray. You know, we'll light the candle and the wind goes again, I suspect. but um, You're avoiding the family crypt, um, and you do not uh, see the waltzing skeletons on your quick journey back uh, down the western corridor towards the chapel as well. Um, and but I'll be like, what happened to the the candlestick and the damn thing that clocked me in the head? Where'd all that go? You locked that in a box. Oh, smart. Mm-hmm. Good job. Okay, cool. That hurt. Oh my god, that hurt. <laughs> Alfred, are, are are you coming with us or are you staying back with Saint Ch- with uh, uh, Sir Chai? Um I mean, I guess don't split the party for, for silly reasons. Well, I'll go watch Ted pray. Okay, so you're back in the chapel. Once again, you have the decaying wooden pews. There's a stone altar with uh, St. Sedge in his um, uh, as his depiction as the Holy Crusader. 
um, and he has one hand. Um, I can't remember. Did you guys take the candle? I don't believe you did. I think we, we just lit it. lit it. Yeah, you just lit it. Yeah. So it if it's gone out, I want to light it again because I think it's a I think it's important. So it's. John, yeah. sorry. Oh. What, what, while we're doing this, uh, I yeah. pray along, but I need to go just like check on a kid. I'll be right back. Sure. Okay. No problem. So yeah. you play pray sequestered there. It's... All right. I'm I'm gonna just fiddle with this thing. I'm trying to keep my computer from catching on fire here. It's, okay. It's a good plan. I'll pray for that too. How's that? that so like, like it's about to take off. So uh, on uh, no one turned uh, no one man, turned off. No one um, uh, put out the candle. So the candle has basically been uh, melting the entire time, and it's basically like basically like a, a, a close to being like a puddle of red goo in his hand. So when you entered the room, it had been snuffed out, but there was still a substantial amount of it. But it had dripped <clears throat> over the you know it had dripped down his hand and down his elbow and dripped onto the altar itself. Oh, okay. um, and now that 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 same trail is basically like increased, and so there's like a lot of like wax that has dripped down. It's um, you know, it's 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 quite disturbing looking because it's it's you know it's the color of blood, yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. But it's basically like a, a, a just a pool of melted wax that is basically formed around his entire hand now and doesn't really look like he's holding much of anything. It's just like, yeah, you know, you're melted. still awake. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Right, right at the very end. Yeah, I can. I'll mush it up maybe and and pull out my Acme Adventures Zippo and light that thing. <laughs> you have a tinderbox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you light it up, and when you when you, it's very difficult to catch because it's right at the end of its life. Like it's not there's not much left to it, but it does briefly when it when it catches um, uh, the wind whoosh, rushes in again, carrying with it the same sounds that you heard before of the uh, of distant right. horses neighing and uh, victorious battle cries raised raised on yeah, high. Yeah. Definitely, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to read from the prayer book, and I'll I'll have one of the wafers, and I'll pray for guidance. And I'm hoping Saint Sedge is actually here. All right. So here's which is interesting when when you when you were in the uh, the room to the to the left here, where there was pat that was beyond the tapestry that's hanging there on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. You had found that uh, those wafers in that box, and I had noted to you that it, yeah. they were surprisingly preserved, even after all this yeah. time. You eat yeah. the wafer, it's surprisingly fresh, and when you do, you actually feel refreshed when you eat it, and you gain a hit point. <gasps> Indeed. It's not the prayer, it's the wafer? Well, you're not really sure. I'll pray some more. <laughs> eat more crackers. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I totally, like, this is, this is, as far as Argus is concerned, this is proof of, uh, the efficacy of the saint and uh indeed you will continue to pray how many wafers are there i believe there's I 20 we had 20 but I, in the video i think you guys gave one to uh sir chide yes so now there's 18 18 okay well um can i eat three Matt, more halifax okay. has discovered that the holy wafers uh, seem to have healed him a hit point oh my oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, so yeah. How many, how many, many of these did we have? <laughs> we now have eighteen. There's eighteen left. But Sir Snacks a lot is about to eat all of them. No. <laughs> um, 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 um. There'd be no point. I can only have five hit points. He's like cookie I, monster, just like pieces like falling out of. It. <laughs> I do want to eat another one and see if I feel even better. Uh, you do, yes. Oh, quite, God, quite yeah. nourishing. Feels super oh. good. <laughs> okay, another 17 you lit but the two of you literally see color return to argus's sal normally sallow cheeks <laughs> his uh his mustache uh, bristles with happiness and health <laughs> yes. oh my god points curl up yeah okay this is this is great i feel that the saint has has answered my prayer and my question and i feel a lot better and i am prepared to uh, accede to your wacky demands, and we will we will investigate fairy. Argus can. Uh, you guys want to do? Feels like he could face down the cold prince himself. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> should, wait, should we eat one just like one shy of full and still take our nap and then go? Yeah, well, that's what I was wondering. Like, if we wanted to meta game this a little bit, yeah, I would. I should eat one more and then I sleep and I'll get one back. Right, so. Um, Let's do it. What? Okay, so wacky kids, and then let's go find these undead bastards. 
<laughs> and see if we can put them to sleep. Okay. Are so, you uh, are you so, gonna eat me, uh, Hallie? Yeah. If I if I eat uh, three, that would be that would be. Like, so who's okay. keeping who's keeping track of the number of? I got it here. So okay. I've eaten uh, three, and Hallie eats three. There's thirteen left. All right. So you're gonna make your way back to the tomb again, correct? Yeah, man. Okay. So he's he's there yeah, once are again. We go find the undead bastards first, or are we just gonna go sleep? What undead bastards are you talking about? His parents are d doing a little minuet all the way around the tomb. And that's a problem. How? I mean, they got a lot of jewelry on them, but really, they're, I was just thinking it might be nice just to put them to sleep. They're not. At, they're not at rest. Yeah, it would. It would I, be a nice thing to do. I see. I thought. Okay, so I heard you guys talking about in the video. Um, yeah. Uh, what you thought? Like their bones have been disturbed or something, or we need to go break right. a spell on their tombs? Yeah, we went into a chamber with, that had like five family members of his, like interred. There were three undisturbed caskets on one side and then two disturbed caskets on the other side. Okay. Um, we never actually went into the room enough to read the plaques, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you never actually entered the room. Right, right. because we oh, just yeah, saw we, like, we the power of slime <laughs> and the undead people being like, come dance with us. We were like, look out. <laughs> <laughs> But now I feel like I, we got our wafer muscles on. We should go check it out. Wafer muscles. Nice. Uh, um, well, before we do that, uh, there was some talk about some weapons. Yeah. Fancy weapons. We actually would have had to go through that room to get oh, okay. to right, that's a good point. Um, the Saints place. So we'll just no. point them out to you and be like, apparently they're just really well made. No, you, you don't go through the room. Oh, we don't? No. I thought we went through that room. The, the, the chapel is literally the mirror of that room. Ah, okay, sorry. The chapel's on the west side, and the statues are on the right, on the east side. We've we've been been back, through, back through the, the doggy room and back around. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'll shut up now. Do you want to so you, you go back there? It'll take a turn. Uh, I think it's probably worth a turn to go up and you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go see about getting me a... A new weapon, if possible. Yeah, can we have like a montage where we like gear up and we're like oh, commando oh, style oh, with the new spears and the new maces and and we do that muscly handshake. <laughs> yeah, the A team music plays. Bum ba dum bum. <laughs> right. Oh, we're gonna get banned on YouTube if I so say that. you uh yeah. yeah so you uh you make your way back into the hall of the uh, hounds um and as you yeah. enter you actually hear. From the direction of where the hounds are standing quite stock still, you hear um, uh, two hounds baying. Like, <laughs> it makes you guys whip your head around towards the to the hounds themselves, but they just stand there in the darkness in the flickering lantern light. That's oh, freaky. With their muscles. Like, you still want to sleep, bro? Edgar, stay. <laughs> um, and you make your way back around to the east side and into the... Um, into the statues with the weapons. So, like I said, they are all made of dark stone. Same, same uh, looking gentleman, but each of them holding a, a, a very real and very ornate weapon. Um, so, if you're looking for the two that you are comfortable wielding, Argus, um, although you are a fighter, so you can wield anything with equal ease, right, um, so is a, a flanged mace with a spiraling hilt, quite lovely, and an equally lovely spear, which has a serrated blade. Looks quite nasty. Looks like it would definitely hurt going in and out. So I remember um, Snell saying uh, he also had some interest in the spear. So that may be something that you guys debate about. Or if the mace is just as good, that may maybe that's... Your, your other choice is, Argus, you have a, a morning star that has um, two-inch long spikes on it. Um, a battle axe. That is a, a true battle axe, as, as you well know, Ted, uh, a real battle axe that is, uh, has, is engraved with a horse's head on the flat um, on either side and a war hammer that has a head shaped like a boar. Once again, like a real historical war hammer and a um, halberd that uh, looks relatively normal, although it's well made, but it has a moldy pennant that has been attached to it. Um, they already tried to pull it out and look to see what it described uh what was described upon it, but uh, it's too too torn and too torn, torn to, to tell. Yeah, and of course, there's one conspicuous one statue that has conspicuously empty-handed. No, no, it, it's not. I don't know. 
He I put did his, not. He put his crappy not, dented blunt. Oh, you're right. I totally forgot about that. Right. Yeah. So there's a very familiar looking <laughs> blade in that one in that in that hand, and your eyes are quickly drawn to the lovely looking hilt that is sticking up above uh, Halifax's scabbard at his side. Well, if if Snell is hot to have a a, a spear, I guess I could take the the mace. Um, spiraling hilt sounds pretty cool. Flanges is nice. So they're like you know inlaid with gold, or uh, you know finely engraved or chiseled, or what is it? You know, yeah, basically like that. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it, it uh, would probably fetch you more money on the market than a normal mace. It's a very right. fine. It's basically like a, like a masterwork weapon, but not without the mechanical advantage, right? Oh, okay. It's just a very uh, beautiful and uh, yeah, but still effective weapon. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm you know I'm old school. I like hitting things with heavy pieces of metal and make their armor break. So Excellent. I'm gonna I'll take that mace. Cool. Feels good in the hands. Is our is our wizard able to like look at? weapons look at stuff and tell if it has kind of a magical vibe or not or not that's the tech magic if he has that spell memorized no problemo <laughs> there ain't no arcana checks <laughs> does it have like a smell to it or like nope <sighs> but right. sometimes but a lot of but a lot of items that you know it's very obvious that they are right <clears throat> um like they'll they'll glow or or there would be some sort of other thing i mean the thing that tipped you off about the sword was obviously you saw the mural that actually depicted the sword as glowing right wait a minute yeah, maybe i uh wrote something down wrong there were seven statues seven statues yeah five things plus the sword what's the seventh thing uh one two three no mace morning star axe warhammer oh, morning star. i forgot to write that down okay yeah. that's my bad you all? Okay, okay, so you you grab oh, yeah. the you grab the mace. You've got that lovely thing. Yeah, it's very nice. I'll put my mace dunk, back in the handle or the 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 hand there, mm -hmm. and I'll sling that mace at my side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, all right, let's go visit mom and dad. Is that what you said? Go to this the center room, read the plaque, see if there's a way we can figure out a way to put them. Are you approaching from the north, from the Hall of Hounds, or are you approaching from the south, which is where the the entranceway was? Where um... no, we don't want to go through the slime curtain. Oh, the slime curtain. Yeah, so I can't remember with with the slime curtain coming down. The two coffers that were open, which side of the slime curtain were they? Were on the north side yeah. or the south side, or one each? So the the slime curtain basically uh, drips into this massive fissure right that is across the floor and the fissure basically runs from the northwestern corner of the room directly southeast into the center of the room so you okay. can't make you can't just make a straight beeline from one door to the other from north to south or south to north right, right. without having to face that fissure in the slime curtain the two open coffers are on the western wall and uh, one of them is directly underneath the slime curtain and is resting sort of on the edge of the fissure Okay. Now the Easter, the Eastern coffers, there's three of those on that side are basically on, are, are not in the, not in the path of the uh, fissure. Um, and so like, if you basically sort of edged your way around those coffers, those coffins, you could, you could just walk, right. you, you, you don't necessarily have to pass through the curtain. There, there is a, there is an easy way to, to avoid it, um, to get to, from one door to the other. But if the, if like, the only thing you're worried about is the slime curtain. Right. It sounds like though the, okay. So if one coffer is under the slime the other is south of that that's correct so if we go through the south door we have a moderately better chance of investigating without getting slimed correct yes you have a uh, you have more room to sort of congregate okay makes sense so let's yeah. go through the south door then that seems reasonable okay it'll take a turn to get into the room is that okay yeah okay so we have oh, we got left on that lantern we got to be almost out i think we have yeah. two turns left is that right oh uh, you have two turns left that's correct yeah so you more. you make your way past the uh, the mirror. Just don't forget that the mirror is there. It is worth quite a lot of money. It's very very heavy. Um, and uh, back into the entrance chamber where you've got your box that is over top the uh, those uh, those uh, figures. And when uh, let's see, uh, give me alignments again. Lawful, neutral. Yeah, I am. Uh, you got to be lawful, Halifax. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. 
when you enter in, when the moment that Elfric steps into the room, the box is like, and you hear like muffled sounds like, remove yourself from the tomb of Sir Jide. How dare you? Um, but, <laughs> but nothing can attack you. Yeah, it's yeah, a little, yeah, we're on it. It's a little disturbing. Um, but And then you uh, enter through the door. Now, this is the door that uh, before Argus got dropped that he was actually investigating when that fight broke out. Um, and don't forget, too, that it said, um, uh, there's an inscription in Old Woldish that said, the most dear, right? So right. entering the, the thing that too makes a lot of sense now. There you go. So you open it up once again. It's exactly basically as I just described. Um, it still appears to yeah. be that way. Um, now, um, as you oh, uh, as you open the doors, the first thing you see is mom and dad. Dun, 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 dun. Coated, hurt. coated with that slime floating in air, gracefully dancing. And once again, the skeletal heads turn towards you. Ah, you've returned. Come, friends, dance with us. Hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not really, I'm not really feeling, uh, not really feeling the beat. We will be here any time you'd like to join. Um, the most disturbing. Go ahead, sorry. Watch you dance. Is that okay? <laughs> you guys seem to like it. Do what thou wilt. All right, I'll slide dun, 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 dun. in, kind of back to the wall, kind of. This is weird. I don't want to touch a ghost. I walk into the. I walk up to the room, into the room. I bow to them both. Mm -hmm. I say, "Honored parents of Sir Chide, we have met your son's spirits in the northern part of the, of the, of the tomb, and he has asked us to perform a quest for him." Um, which we are about to undertake. Um, he seemed quite concerned that your rest had been disturbed. Can you tell me, oh, noble spirits, <laughs> why you are, why are you up and about and dancing when you should be sleeping? So they, 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 they watch you as they're dancing around, and, they, and it appears they're listening. Once again, they're skeletal figures, and they, they don't answer any of your questions. They continue to dance around, always kind of keeping their neck kind of turned towards you. And the only thing they tell you is like every once in a while they gesture and they're like, come, join the Without dance. Without touching the tomb, I want to look at the plaques on the tomb. Okay, sure. So uh, the ones on the east or the west? The ones that are disturbed. Those are on the... Disturbed, yeah. Okay. Yes, I think. On the west, yeah. Well, so uh, which are the ones that, uh, you know, that are in contact with the fissure, basically. So the one that is not in danger of falling in, which is closer to the southern door, um, uh, has uh, the, each each brass plaque has like a little portrait on it and a name, and uh, apparently what it looks to be like a relationship, and it says Lord Brig Forwith, and it says Father, and the portrait bit depicts a stocky. Uh, it's, they're all busts, right? So it's a. a uh, a stocky man with a, a very round head and a chunky beard, like a beard. Right. And is there anything in the casket? Uh, no, like, there does not appear to be anything in the casket. Including don't these appear? Sorry. There's no skeleton either. Although you have a feeling that you're you're looking at it, moving around and dancing. Right. <laughs> you have an idea where. So I, have, that's not just a uh, like a ghostly image of a skeleton. It, it it's actual corporeal bones. No, it is. Yeah, it's a it's a real skeleton, but it's draped okay. in this goo. It's like coated in this slime. Okay, I guess I thought they were apparitions. Okay, no. it's an act. Got it. And and then the other one I assume is his mom. Yes. So the the mother the one that's closer now this one you have to get really close to the sheet of of slime so you have to kind of look at it from a distance but indeed the plaque says that it says the lady Amaranda. Mother, tall, elegant, and a stick-like woman with a large nose, and she's holding a book. Um, that that coffer as well is uh, empty. Is it empty? But is it impregnated with slime or anything like that? There is a little bit of slime that's like built up in there. Yeah. Do these, John? Do these look like they could be moved? Are they like built into the ground or something? Uh, they are stone, so they look like no, they're not like yeah, they, they look like they could be moved with some force. You know what I mean? Like with a great deal of effort. Um, Are Alfred, there any markings on the on the stone that looks like pry bars or 
Does it look like someone from outside opened the caskets and then they came out? Or does it look like they might have come out themselves? It doesn't look like anyone, like there was any force applied from the outside. Okay. Um, you are also right near the fissure. Oh, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're right at the edge. Do you want to look I in? Smell from it? Can I make any kind of guesses about what its nature is or so you it's a uh, it's transparent basically like you can tell the viscosity from a distance which is why you knew it was slime but it doesn't have a color it's not like the green slime that was coating that weird stag skeleton that was outside and okay. then on the altar of the wilding so this is a different thing so uh it's transparent but it's very viscous and is dripping from this hairline fra crack fracture in the ceiling but this fissure is gigantic. Like it's very, 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 very wide, probably about three feet wide at the, at the, um, in the middle of it. Right. Um, when you looked, you don't smell anything when you look down though, and you look into that, uh, that darkness of the fissure, you catch glimpses of something that isn't completely darkness. You see glimmering light somewhere below. And the first thing that makes you think of is the, that, bright sparkly light of, of the sun being reflected off of snow. Mm. Very, very down, 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 far deep. Uh, can I, um, while he's looking at the, the coffins on the West uh, coffer coffers on the West end side, can I look at some of the plaques of the ones on the East side just to see what they say. Yes. Those are all easily accessible. Um, they are all closed. So the, uh, going from south to north, you have um, Emmeline the Chaste, sister, a petite uh, woman cradling a cat and wearing a mourning veil. Uh, in the middle, you have Brigford the Wise, younger brother, uh, depicted wearing chainmail. He has a hound at his side and a bow in his hand. And then uh, uh, directly across from the mother, Near the northern door, you have Brandywith, the good, the elder brother. Um, he's bespectacled, bespectacled with his head bowed, um, and he's leaning on a staff. Mm. Do you say it out loud, Matt? Um, yeah, sure. Does yeah, he would he would read out loud? Yeah, I, I've got the uh, I've got the the uh, the sister, the brother, and uh, uh, I guess the other brother over here. What was the other brother's name? The elder brother? Yeah. Rickford and Brandy Brandywith. Do they ring any bells in like the wizard community kind of thing as being like a scholar or anyone that might like... And no one that you that you're aware of. Uh, a turn goes by from investigating all the coffers. You have one turn left on this lantern. Um John. I will uh I will I'm light it right take... now, John. Oh. I'm sorry, Argus, what'd you say? I will light a torch right now. Light a torch, okay. I, I ask him for his torch. Okay, here you go. I'm going to put it out into the slime. Jesus Christ, I just bought that. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this Jesus Christ? Yeah. Argus is like, uh, uses, gets out of his tinderbox, he lights the torch and all that kind of stuff, and I was like, give me hey, that. Me that <laughs> 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 yeah, so you... you uh, you stick it into the. Uh, let's see what happens. Give me a sec. How flammable is that slime? Let's find <laughs> out. Yes. Uh, Watch the wizard explode. <laughs> okay, so you you uh, two two interesting things happen. First of all, you stick it into the you stick it into the slime. Um, the torch goes out. Uh, it's not like an instantaneous sort of thing, but it's obviously like the wetness of the slime douses that torch, right? So it goes away. Um, but interestingly enough, you actually feel the torch as it's, as you're holding it underneath the sheet, it actually, uh, feels slightly lighter in your hands. It actually pulls your hands slightly upwards. Like it's like, like it's weightless. Let go of it. Okay. So you, you let go of it and it actually floats up that sheet of slime. And then it's sort of, because it was sort of like at an angle a little bit, it like it kind of exits the slime and then drops. And it's on the it's on the other side of the fissure towards the northern door a little bit. Man, we got we got a flying torch, boys. Okay, well, momentarily flying. I'm going to light a different torch. 
so that when that lamp goes out, I've still got some light. Hmm. And uh, you marked off the uh, torch. Yeah, I'm marking them off now. Yeah, cool. Um, that's interesting. So, because it looks like that fissure looking down in there, like did, so there's a staircase elsewhere that we're thinking goes down into Ferry. Two. What's that? Two. There's two staircases. So, two there was also one by the mirror room. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So maybe this fissure goes right down into whatever that corridor is, where the stairs go. I mean, yeah, it would seem to point that way. And and but this that doesn't explain the slime. I mean, you know, I would say looks like ectoplasm to me, but Argus doesn't know that. Uh, that's super weird. And you say it made your torch the torch start to float. Well. Huh. You saw it. Yeah. John, can I just pick up a, a little stone rock and... Yeah, but I'm hit, concussed, you know, so... I, I, I just touched. pick up a little rock and chuck it into the, the slime. Okay, so with the force of your uh, throw, um, it enters the slime curtain, and you see it basically rises up for a split second before it exits from the force of your throw and tumbles down again. But you do you do see it actually rise, like, slightly, and then but then continue its trajectory. And... Does this, but okay, so this looking closely at the slime, is it cascading down or is it in fact cascading up? It's cascading down. Right into the, right into the fissure. From a crack in the ceiling. Can you access the fissure without touching the slime? Uh, it's wide enough that yes, you probably, you possibly could. It'd be very, very difficult. Like you basically have to like bodily put yourself over the edge and slam your whole body against the edge of the fissure, right? So, like, the sheet's, like, behind you. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, it'd be tight. Okay. Yeah, it'd be very, very tight, yeah. Right. I don't like that idea. But the look of it is very strange. Like, Alfred, you can tell immediately like, there's something magical going on there, regardless of the presence yeah. of the slime or not. Like, the fact that you look down there and you're seeing, uh, you know, first of oh, all, I... ju just judging by your maps that you've made, like, this should be the chamber where you saw the pool of water, right? beyond those floating candles, mm -hmm. right? But the depth of this fissure does belies that, for one thing. And then not only that, but you, um, but it's, what you're seeing down there appears, doesn't make any sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what, what is this, like, flickering light, you know? Oh my God, it's full of stars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so what if we deflect the slime, guys? What if we take the, the covers off the two caskets? And create like a slime barricade and just create like the have the slime just puddle behind the fissure and then try and access the uh the fissure after that. So I think that would work, except that I thought we were here to close the caskets and put the skeletons to rest. Yeah. Damn it, Jim, I'm here to explore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to go where no man has been before, except for right, those two right. floating dead people. That's right. And if it if it okay. if it seems like the the whole Ops you into the same room that you can just walk down the stairs to get to. I would just walk down the stairs to get to the room. Well, well, I'm natural I'm explorer. You can the water in the dungeon if you want to. That seems like a great idea. It's I'm going to go down than, the hole. It's better than falling. <laughs> oh, that's right. If you go down the stairs, there's like water down there, right? Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Both sides? A little island with floating lights on it or something. So yeah, you couldn't quite see point. because... Yes, on both sides, okay. but there is a barrier of actual tiny little floating votive candles that are actually floating in air that prevents you from entering the main chamber where the pool is. But because of the angle of the staircase going down, you could you could kind of see that in the middle of this circular chamber that is filled with water, that there is some sort of statue that is in the middle of that room. But because of the because you were at the top of the stairs, you can't really quite make it out. Just that there we is never a statue. went down. Never went really down. We just kind of no, you didn't. You just yeah, yeah, yeah. Saw the and we said, "I'm not putting my foot in that." Right. So, uh -oh. hmm. yeah, I mean, my, my my question is, if our goal in this room primarily is putting mom and dad's bones to rest. Right. From my uh, from our experience, I only know one way to do that, and that's to chop the skeletons up. Oh, man. I, don't I mean, we, 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 met, we met the guy at the at the churchyard. Yeah. Right. Dancing. <laughs> just keeping that in mind. They're, as you guys are all talking, they're just like floating around and dancing around. You know. Like mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so try to be appreciative of that. No, I don't either. What if um, we close the easy casket and see what happens? And if it doesn't 
do anything to dispel half of our skeleton problem, then maybe the lid is a fine deflector shield for slime. I mean, I, I, I'm happy to try. I can't imagine that if your bones are out floating around, that just your casket being closed will put you to rest. Yeah, well, you wouldn't think being buried at a crossroad would keep vampires away, but supposedly it does. So that sounds know. like it would actually work. That sounds actually like a pretty good one. See, that sounds okay. <laughs> right? Like, that sounds Great. pretty good. Hey, I Out just of line. got healed, so what the heck do I know? Um, yeah, Artie's so ballsy now that he's got some hit points. <laughs> <laughs> and a concussion. Yeah. And, yeah, making bad choices. Bad yeah, there choices. you go. There you go. Um, and, I mean, and I don't know. What, like, I'm not, what do you go ahead. I'm not prepared. <laughs> for, obviously, we're not prepared to do an exorcism here. There's no evidence of what aroused them from their slumbers other than possibly the slime itself. Or, or the magic of this fissure opening up, why it opened, who could say? Um, Only one of those caskets had the slime on it. Well, maybe the slime is not the cause, but it's a, another symptom, right? If something ripped open this fissure in this room to fairy, fairy magic is leaking out. Slime does things, it appears it does weird things. Skeletons jump out of bed. Uh, you know, dogs and cats living together. Don't forget um, too that the, that the skeletons are actually floating in the air. They're like not, the stuff that goes to the like slime. The oh, yeah. The rock. yeah. So Wait, can we think? Can we think of a way to get the slime off of them? They've met. Yeah, they okay. have also maintained their floatiness even after they are done passing through the slime. Right? We've seen them in whole other parts of the dungeon. <laughs> so. Um, Squirt him with a water bottle, I guess, and see what happens. We do. We do have a uh, yeah, super soaker. Have water. That's I have oh, super how, how much water do I have? I have one water skin. I think we each have one water skin. Right? I have um, one with me. Yeah, the other one's back at camp. Also, don't forget that one of them is wearing a beautiful pearl necklace. The other one is wearing a gold medallion. Right. Do we do we want to call them over and? Close them down with water and see if that gets any of the slime off. I kind of don't want to do that, but <laughs> it, seems like, it seems like a a logical thing to try. Although if it's, you know, I mean, if I were a skeleton and somebody just started shooting me with a super soaker, I would, I would take I offense. Mean, I mean, we could ask for consent. <laughs> consent is important. You know what'd be really uh, fun is if I pour this I water ask on if you. they know what the slime is. <laughs> They're going to ignore me, but I asked them <laughs> if they know what the slime is. That's true. They haven't answered questions. Join us. Have. Join us in the dance. How, how do I join you? Do I go into the slime? They don't, they, they don't answer you. They just gesture at you to like sort of follow their moves, you know, that sort of thing. So okay. If, okay. what if I were to just sort of not reach out and grab them, but to just kind of waltz around the room? So, so they, they react to that. They 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 watch you, but once again okay. they are skeletons, so they don't have any. You know, you can't tell if they're pleased or not, right? They're grinning. Yeah, I can they're, tell. they're grinning. Yes, they're they're always happy. <laughs> Elephant is yeah. definitely grinning as Argus dances around like a fool. Yeah. Okay. So Argus, Ar 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 react to that. Well, I'll say this, Argus. Whenever you start to dance, they basically dance their way over to the curtain, and they yeah. the slime curtain, and they move through it, and continue, and you know. And they're like, come this way, dance with us. They move towards us or like away from us? Away from us, towards the slime. They go through the slime curtain. They, they've yeah. been doing that, but they when they pick up on that Argus is dancing, they sort of like, this way, you know, and they're... Dun, 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 dun. They're like trying to get him to go through the slime with them. Right. That sounds so like an incredibly bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it. It's either it's a terrible, terrible thing to do, or it's the only way to uh, figure out what's going on. Possibly both. Um, we don't have any way to plug the fissure up above either, right? It's very thin. Mm -hmm. It's very narrow. Yes. Well, maybe you know, for, for your idea, we can we can take one of the coffin lids. If the slime makes things float, it could float up and plug the. <laughs> or That's a great idea, Halifax. I love it. We uh, could, uh, we could go on top of the mound and dig down 
it's probably some sort of weird magical thing. It doesn't exist up there type thing. I'm going to flip over the coffin lid so that it's concave and catches the slime. Yeah. And I'm going to have the, one of the other muscle guys come over and we're going to lift it underneath the slime thing and just kind of lift it up like this and see if it'll go it's up to this Close okay. up to plug up the hole. That's, that's really bold of you to assume I have any muscles. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. You've got muscles. We know Argus has got muscles. He just doesn't have lungs. <laughs> All right. So um, you, uh, yeah. Okay. So I assume it's Alfred and Halifax then. You sure. you lift up that coffer. Okay. It's like, <clears throat> um, and you're now you're watching the entire time to see the skeletons rat. They don't, they continue to, they, they continue to dance. Um, and you, you do that. You move it underneath the curtain of slime. It immediately catches it. And what you would assume would be like the the weight of the viscosity of the liquid, like would bring it, make it even heavier. It doesn't. It actually rises out of your hands. Like, well, you can feel your hands being pulled up. Do you let it go? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna keep using my staff to guide it up to the ceiling. Right. So there's no like forward horizontal trajectory at all, right? So it goes vertically up. Yeah. So yeah. So it does. It it actually floats up. You have your staff and you kind of guide it up. And indeed, um, it uh the coffin lid is not long enough to seal the entire crack All right the crack is about roughly about 15 feet from end to end um so we need two coffin lids but you do get it you know in the middle of it basically so um and it in its concave once again it's an excellent idea and you put it right up and it goes Doosh. can we can now we slide it so it covers like one half of the of the thing instead of like if you in want. the middle Sure, yeah. And then, use, and then do the same trick on the other side? If you want. With the other, with the other casket lid. Yeah, so it doesn't... So both mom and dad's coffin lids, you do that. Um, I'm going to say like moving them and waiting for it to go up and everything is going to take another turn. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, that's so... Gonna kill, that'll kill my lantern. That kills the lantern. Now it's... Um, so. I have another lantern though too, guys. I, I've, got, I've got more flasks of oil. I'll, I'll mark another flask of oil off and relight the lid. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also have Argus's torch going as well, which loses one turn. So mark off yeah, the oil. Put your torch out since I since I have the lantern going again. All right, you're good for another 24 turns with that lantern. There might be something useful to light on fire here, I've, or drop okay. the torch down the fissure, that kind so, of things. You put them both in place. <laughs> they quickly fill with. Um, so it basically cuts off more or less. Like it's not a perfect fit, obviously. Um, so there is still like uh, some some you know, very thin streams kind of coming down where the two actually uh, connect in the middle, right? Um, but then they so they actually fill quite quickly with the slime and they start to sort of gush over a little bit, right? Um, from the, a, a little bit, but it's, you know, it's not like, it's like an airtight seal, right? Um, but it's at a point though where, the, where it overflows over prevents it from actually hitting, it b- prevents it from actually dripping down to the fissure. Do you understand? Can you kind of visualize yeah. it? Yeah, so it's spattering against the floor. You guys actually have to kind of back up from wherever you um, where you were guiding it with your staff there, Alfric, uh, in order to not get hit with it. Um, uh, and it slowly, just because of the, the the nature of the floor, the way it's cracked and sort of beveled, it it slowly like runs down into the fissure itself. So, what you basically accomplish, which is pretty impressive, is that you have created an, the ability to actually enter the fissure without. Or investigate the fissure, for that matter, without um, any real danger of slime. Cool. Yeah. I want to do that. Right? We have fifty feet of rope. How far down? Now that we have an unobstructed view of the fissure floor, how far down does it go? Well, that's the thing. That's the strange thing is that you can't tell. It appears endless, but somewhere down there, somewhere in the dark, are these are these glimmering lights, like sunlight off of snow. I've got rope too. So now my other question is, is now that the slime supply is more or less cut off, what happens to the skeletons? So they, they are still dripping with slime and they continue to dance. Now okay. you might want to watch them. Now we hose them off. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah. Um, we get our uh, water skins ready and... Uh, we're going to need um, water at some point. Maybe, you I know... Mean, it, there's snow out. outside. There's snow outside. You want to... You want to go outside? I mean, we can outside? use we can use the water that we have now, and then when we get thirsty later, we can we've got snow. We can make new new water. Right, because I say if we're going into ferry, we got to take our own food and water. You know True. this. Stuff. Yeah, you cannot drink or eat what's there. Trick some other fay. That will be the end of you. 
which on reflection, no, never mind. Hey. Oh, terrible idea. No. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. So we, yeah, we, we can, can get hang up. Water. So so let's, wanted... drop, let's drop your lit torch down the fissure and see what happens. Yeah. All right. You're very generous with his torches. I know he is. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> before we do that, I want to go over and pick up the one that we threw first and sort of shake the slime do... off and see if I can get that relit. Yeah, why don't you just, we can tie a rope on that too. And then just, uh, the so, torch will pull in the rope. You bump it. <laughs> so the, the, the middle and balance it. The, the existing the existing torch is drenched with um with slime and it's it doesn't you can't just shake it off like you'd have to do, you know, you'd have to remove it somehow. It will it oh, will not it will not light. Okay. Let's, let's cry a little bit. This I just take a little bit of water out of my water skin edge and like see if it like washes off. It's water solid. It does. It, yeah. it, it 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 does come off. A little bit, not enough for him to light it, but but it does it does come off. Right. All right, shelve that. I I I can drop a, sh- a torch down the. I'll drop the lit one down the fissure. Right. That's not good. So you see it go down about fifteen feet, right? Which is basically the distance that you can actually kind of visually see, like the sides of the fissure, the rocky sides of the fissure, um, and then it basically disappears. It's gone. You don't you you, you hear no. Yeah you don't hear it hit anything or anything. It just sort of, and, it, and its light is gone. And we don't see the, the image or, or appearance of the light of sunlight on snow change in any way. No. All right. I, like, I tie, tie a rope around me. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down. I only, I have the intellect to understand what mysteries lie below. You two guys just stand up here and haul <laughs> me back up. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, was a dreg scout not for nothing? You know, I know all my knots, so um, mm-hmm. I'll uh, tie him a you know a nice uh, uh, breaking and entering thief type harness. You know, <laughs> wrap it that's, why my, that's why my title is of of sights yet unseen. Let's do this. I'm ready. Well, I'm I'm just a just wolf spider. Like a, so what do you know? It's a backup <laughs> anchor. I mean, I have a grappling hook. So I'm going to take this grappling hook, tie the rope to it, and affix it to, uh, you know, a, a, a crack in the floor, a crack, crack in the wall, like something secure mm-hmm. that we can yeah, still pull. Of one of the coffins, those that stones seem heavy there. enough. That's fine. They're stone, right? You know, like so you yeah. just hook right over the edge. And we, we we can pull him back up, but we don't have to worry about like being. All right, we have a cigarette break first. You don't hang out while he just swings on the end of the rope down there. <laughs> All right, Alfred, you go. You going over? Twice. Yeah, I'm going, John. All I'm right, going. cool. All right, so you get yourself yourself strapped in, uh, put the hook over the side of the coffer, and you you, you repel uh, down the side of that uh, fissure, and down you take go. Take a torch with you. Yeah, uh, you... yeah. I actually need a lantern. I'm going to take the lantern with me. You guys have well, torches. You uh, you you need both of your hands to go down the rope. Oh. Yeah, but a lantern I can actually tie. Like onto my belt, right? You could dangle, you could dangle a six foot piece of rope down on tied to my waist, and then tie the lantern to that. Okay, that's so fine. Down first. Sure. All right. Are we or using we this? Are we using the lantern that Halifax just lit? Yeah. Okay. So we got our only lantern. I don't know, but we you, have two lanterns, but only think, one has oil in it. Yeah, Snell. Uh, Snell has a lantern as well. Yeah. Okay, so you're yeah we we can we can work on uh, torches while Snell's doing whatever Snell's doing. All right, yep. So you have a more flickering um, uh, uh, torch light up above, um, right, lending lending the room a little bit more ominous flavor as um, uh, Alfred goes down with a lantern light hooked to his belt, and down he goes. He repels down fifteen feet, and then uh, uh, you see that he basically winks out of existence. Although you can feel the um, tension from the rope is still there, right? But you don't hear, you don't see him or anything. All right. Uh, Can't hear. We start yelling. We we don't hear a response. Nope. You don't hear a response. Right. Um, oh, we got to get a new wizard. Now, uh, uh, I'll th- pull that, out my dagger and no, never mind. <laughs> so uh, soon after you start yelling for him and you don't hear a response and you start to think to yourself like maybe this isn't good. Um, uh, the rope goes. Uh, you basically uh, are you guys holding onto the rope or are you just kind of sort of watching it? Yeah, well, we're. Slowly lowering it down. Okay, yeah. So, um, uh, your you you both like stumble backwards onto your butts as like slack. There's immediate slack, like, um, and you you pull the um, uh, the rope back, 
and it's the full rope. It's like not cut at the end or frayed. It's literally like the entire section of rope is back with you. Just sans Alfric, right? So that happens. Now, switching over to Alfric, as you descend <laughs> down f- f- 15 feet, uh, uh, you're not dead. I'll just put that out there right now. You're okay. <laughs> you, um, we uh, think you are. We are uh, 100% certain that you are completely dead. So, <laughs> yeah. A very, a, a very strange thing happens. So you go down 15 feet, and you can see that those, uh, those glimmering lights are starting to coalesce into something that you can actually see and make out what's going on. And then um, as you're peering down there, the, the moment that your foot makes the next step down the wall, everything disappears, and your foot can gain no purchase. And at the same time, the rope unravels from your waist despite you sort of grabbing it like, no, no, no. And you find yourself falling for just a split second. But you realize that when you're falling, you're actually falling extremely slowly. And as you go down, down into the darkness, the darkness slowly, uh, the the glimmering lights below you that looks like, once again, like uh, reflecting sunlight off snow, uh, forms into a vast white world as you find yourself slowly uh, descending down from the sky um, and you look down below you and you see like from as far as the eye can see a huge ominous looking wood of snow covered furs right F-I-R right um, going as far as the eye can see you see strange humanoid shapes that are actually dangling from these furs at regular intervals but what catches your eye the most is that d- directly where you're going down you can actually see a massive white tower glimmering with frost and rime that is directly below your feet, three stories tall that stands amidst a huge clearing uh, on a, upon a frozen lake. And uh, you descend down towards that. You appear to be coming down from the, on the northwest side that you're going to be kind of dropping down upon that frozen lake to the, to the northwest side of that. Um, you can see coming from what appears to be a path uh, from the southwestern side, a sleigh. Holy Dr- crap. I'm in fucking Narnia. No! <laughs> a sleigh that is pulled by white stags and appears to have some sort of small, wretched creature. You can't quite tell because it's so far. You know, you're looking down. It looks like a little ant. Comes rushing out of the forest and skates along the, the lake um, and appears to approach an entranceway that you can't quite see because of the angle that you're at and then disappears. But you can see, like, the the, the tracks of it cutting through the ice. Um uh, and you can see like the puffs of breath coming from the stag's face, uh, stag's noses, but then it disappeared from your vantage point. And then you slowly make your way down. You can see that around you, there are um, every once in a while, there is sticky, viscous, purple drips and slime kind of coming around. But it looks like the same viscosity as the transparent stuff that you encountered in the real world. But now it's like purple. It hasn't hit you, and it doesn't seem to be uh, constant like up above but when you look up above you you see that there is a a huge massive um uh crack in the sky a big purple wound in the sky like purple black wound uh, which looks like is what you came through and it's accompanied by this purple grossness that's kind of dripping from the sky and you land upon the frozen lake and there are these splotches of it sort of around you and you're just sort of set set gently down does it in, do the purple splotches interact with us with the ice? Is it like hissing or no? Oh. Nope. They just stain. They stain the snow and the ice around you. I still have the lantern. You do, yeah. Although it's you know it's it's bright, bright here, bright I and doused, it's uh I the lantern. it's bitter. Okay, you douse it. Okay, cool. Um, it's bitter, bitterly cold here. Um, you can't. Your whole body is shivering. Um, uh, your breath condenses into streams of vapor immediately. Obviously, uh, and th- it's bright, sparkling sunshine—the kind like uh, that would actually give you sunburn because it uh, from underneath because it reflects off the snow. And um, but there, at the same time, there are gentle snowflakes falling from the sky, even though there's no clouds in the sky. So it's this very strange, surreal sort of uh, uh, pristinely beautiful place, but very cold and unfriendly at the same time. Okay. Now and, that I'm on the ground, can I see what figures are dangling from the trees? Uh, you would uh, difficult to tell. They look like dangling humanoids that are not moving, but they are uh, quite some distance away. 
uh, you're approximately, let's see, if I, about 30 yards away from the edge of the forest. So the forest of fir trees basically encircles this lake and the tower at the center of it. And the tower is at the center of the lake. Yes. Is it on an island or does it just come up out of the, out of the ice? Uh, it comes right up out of the ice. You're not sure if it, if you know the nature of it, really. Are there any markings on the ice that would indicate like foot traffic uh, from the tower? There is um, the the there is numerous foot traffic coming from uh, paths to the south. One from the southwest where the sleigh came from, and one to the southeast. Once again, uh, you you can't really tell because you are on the northwest side of the tower right now. So you're basically in the shadow of this tower, right up against the wall. The tower itself is made out of uh, white marble with icy. Oh, so I'm right by the tower. I'm right. Yeah, by the yeah, tower. yeah. You dropped right to the northwest of it. Yeah, you're on the lake. Um, I pull my hood up over my head. Um, try and get as warm as possible, and I'm going to start doing a perimeter check of the tower to see if there's a doorway to get in, or are there any sure. windows in the tower? Or there are. So they have a uh, maiden like crying at the top of the tower, or anything. <laughs> there, they there's icy walls. You can see that they're very slick, although the walls themselves are made out of white marble. There are uh, uh, numerous windows that are sort of dotted around in irregular intervals all the way up. Um, they are uh, frost patterned, like they look like snowflakes, basically. Um, and there is a thin plume of smoke, bluish smoke that actually rises from the summit of the tower. You probably should, probably probably should have noted that to you as you were floating down towards it. Um, when you uh, you kind of slip and slide your way around the tower because you are on ice here, um, you do see that uh, di facing directly south, there is a door, solid, um, and it appears to be made out of polished cherry wood with black iron fittings. So it is very distinctive because the rest of the tower is white, right? And this is this dark, rich cherry wood with black iron. Are there guards on the door? Nope. I would definitely tell you that. Yeah. Okay. Now, you do see that there um, is uh, there is a... What, what you do see, actually, immediately is that there is a, a massive sleigh. This huge sleigh um, with a team of... Uh, four white stags, beautiful, beautiful, massive beasts that are kind of like look, you know, in consternation at you as you kind of approach from the side, um, puffing out uh, st uh, steam uh, steam vapor. And um, the sleigh itself is laden with, piled with all these, all these goods. It looks like there's uh, fruits and wines and um, there's actually like a, an actual cauldron of like steaming soup there and everything like all this good stuff like a like a, a wealth of, of stuff can i stay kind of hidden on the side of the tower so that i'm not in view of everyone that might be by the sleigh yeah sure absolutely okay can i peek around and see if i see like any um humanoids you, you mentioned a wretched creature that was driving the sleigh yeah they, that does not that person does not seem to be present okay so i'm going to switch back to argus and halifax so uh, he's not there, you, and you have his entire rope. Oh, crap. Yeah. He has, we don't even have his stuff. Yeah. We need now, we this is one of those D&D things, right, where there's a difference between in-character knowledge and player knowledge, right, where we, you you know, it makes everyone's, you, you, you've got to metagame in this sort of situation, right? You know what I mean? So, it, it, you know, I know it's more like verisimilitude to actually act like your character and all that kind of stuff, but... No one's going to like it if we're running two separate campaigns while someone's not talking the entire time. So you've got to find a reason to get down there <laughs> one way or the other. <laughs> I mean, I'll just say it right out loud. I don't have time for all this like uh, navel gazing of like, what do we do? You know, we just go, we go, go with the game. Yeah. We get married. We, uh, we raise a family yeah. for the sake of the game married. and the sake of the stream. Let's make everyone's lives happier and figure out a way to make make it right with your character that you would decide to go go down there. Right. All right. Well, <laughs> we're, we're streaming this. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. I forgot to have you guys sign waivers. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like I'm on like a movie or something. It's like a weird reality thing. Don't, don't eat the Turkish delight. Right. Uh, it's, um, fine. it's fine. Dude, it's, I would I, know, I would have worked on White Witch like that. I would have been like, mm, I'm in. <laughs> so uh Halifax, that 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 did not that did not do what I thought it was gonna do. 
Kind of. Uh, kind of. I mean, I figured something bad would happen, but it wasn't that. Yeah. I thought we'd... Uh, 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 I thought we'd be able to pull him back up. Like, yeah. Smoking stump just ahead, something, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, that's a little dark. So I think <laughs> that's a little dark. I think that it was I think that's fairy down there. You agree? Oh, I, I, I think so. I think that this is um uh an unnatural entrance into the places where the stairs go. I think I said it before. I think we should just walk down the stairs. I think that's the best, like safest way to find out where he where he is yeah now if you wanted to actually get, do kill two birds with one stone halifax is actually actually right like it would obviously your characters would be like well something awful happened to him um but right. it, but if you suppose that he entered fairy you have what you, appears to be a, a safer way to do it right i mean i also yeah. i also feel like i'm supposed to go down there like i mean not just like with the you know with the base or whatever mm -hmm. but because like i'm in tried's tomb those things are, you know, yeah. part of Sir Chide's tomb. If it's designed to keep, you know, Joe blows out, I've got his ring, I've got his sword. If anything's gonna like be like the yeah, this guy's cool to get down, it would be those things. Okay. I I would be I wanna go down, I wanna go down the stairwell with uh, that my lady's looking at. Mm -hmm. Right. That seems oh, like Okay, so the western one, right? The southwestern one. Hold on. I'm, I hear you, Halifax. Let me just say, if if he's dead or half a smoking stump or whatever he is, haste makes waste. He's not going to get any more alive by going rushing down the stairs. Let's go get our stuff, the rest of the rope, maybe some food and water. We don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know how, we're gonna, how long we're going to be on the journey. You just rush down there. We'll all be sorry. You don't have a you don't have a blanket. We're supposed to be going to the winter kingdom, right? Remember that? Remember how? Like, I mean, come on. I'm not going down there without like my bedroll and stuff. Let's go get our stuff. Let's let's do this smart. Can you? What if he? What if he's fallen and can't and he can't get up? <laughs> he can't get up. too easy. Too easy. We what should... if he's? What if he's down there? What if he's fighting for his life, you big cowardly shit? Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> I'm not think, here. You can't talk. I think <laughs> that, that's your conscience speaking. <laughs> I think we. Yeah. I say, I say, we go down. I'm worried about him. Yeah, if he's dead, haste won't matter. But then, if he's not dead yet, then he soon will be. Let's go get our stuff. <laughs> Come on. Oh, we're gonna be sorry if we go down there unprepared, man. You don't just walk into fairy. You're a it's big like corridor. Oh, we're we're good. We're good. I mean, we didn't come down here with nothing. I was assuming that he came. He brought, I I did not assume that I left all my stuff at the. I still think that I that I have my cap. I, my my my. Yeah, whatever whatever you everything. normally have in your pack and stuff like that, you still have. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not empty handed. I've got my rations. I've got my water skin. The reason I say that, I mean, I'm not empty handed either, but the reason I say we left everything back at the camp was because we, it's in, it's in the video. Like we, that, because when that was when, um, Alfred was out that week and we just left him at the camp with the tent and everything and the horses were there and, uh, and, and our mule. Ethel. Ethel. And you realize we've been down here for like a couple of hours, right? Right. I realize that. Okay. Yeah. I'm saying like, it's no, I, not I that think far away. Go yeah. ahead, John. No, I yeah, I I I understand that you probably left like uh, your camping stuff is probably there, but obviously you took with you everything that you you thought you would need for adventure, right? right. For right. dungeoneering. My so. assumption was we didn't know how long we were going to be in a dungeon, you know. So I definitely brought food and water with me, but I didn't bring right sleeping. Bags. You brought what you thought that you would need for a dungeon, and now it, it appears that you may actually have to go into. Fairy, wil fairy wilderness. So, uh, right. yeah, it's a fair, fair point. So, just do whatever you want to do. Just, it's not that far away. Let's just go get our stuff and come back. Okay, you have to go through the wormhole again. The worms might be right there. And we killed the worms. You haven't tried the front door yet. Just be aware. You've Maybe looked at it. Oh, wait, we should. Go. You know what? <laughs> Let's go try the front door. <laughs> Why not? Okay, 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 okay. As long as I'll tell you, what, I'll make you a deal. If the front door opens, we go get our stuff. If we can't get it open, it's a sign. 
Okay. Saints have spoken. We'll go down. Deal? Okay. 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 All, right. Hurry. All right. Okay. I'll so, say don't bleed to death. You you move out the southern door and you're immediately back in the uh the entrance hall. Uh the uh both of you are lawful, so the um the the creatures, the the little the guardians in the box, uh stay quiet and it's nice and quiet in here. Don't uh-huh. have those those nasty neutrals with you. Yeah, I can take a uh, pee break. Uh well, yeah, you. sure. Uh you want to take a quick break? Might be a good time. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Sure. We shall take a break and we will be right back to see if they can open the front door. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be right back. And we're back and we're joined by a lovely dog. (gasps) Mr. Rufus. (laughs) Yes. What a good boy. All right. Uh, We'll call him. We'll call him uh, Flager for the night. (laughs) Okay. He likes cheddar. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Flager likes cheddar. Yeah. Okay, so you um, you're back in the uh, entrance hall, and you're going to try out the front door. So once again, you move up towards the step, and you investigate. Uh, I'm going to say, ah, no, it, no, a turn doesn't go by. It doesn't take you that long. You just literally went through the south door. Um, right. So musty and dank in here, wet. Um, you've got that uh, mosaic on the floor, right? Here lies the noble Sir Chide, Slayer of Frost, Defender of the King. With Sir Chide atop a white charger, piercing the heart of a fairy knight with a sword, St. George and the Dragon style. Um, and uh, you move up the steps, which are about 10 feet up, and there is a large granite block. So is which, there a handle or a lever or a pull chain or any kind of mechanism? There is, there, there is not, um, although you do remember um, from last time you were here that, and Argus, you spent a lot of time on these steps, actually, that there is a, uh, uh, <laughs> there is a, uh, a glimmer of light showing around the seams. Right. As in, it is not like a, a granite slab that was fitted to this door jam, right? right of, it this, was sort of, it was like rolled in place. Is it round? No, it's like a solid, uh, and you can see this from the outside when you before you approached. Um, it's it's like a rectangular, it's like a cut piece of stone, but rough and weathered and old, um, and it appears to have been set into place, uh, you know, but uh, just to sort of cover an entrance, right? Instead of instead of I mean, expertly it, fitted, def- it, it seems to say push rather than try to like pull, or does it say? Yeah, well, it doesn't it doesn't say anything, but it but it's large <laughs> enough that. Um, like from the from the side that you're on, of course, that it, it it takes up the entire entrance way, right? Like it's obviously like you can't drag it in with you. You know what I mean? It either has to be um, do whatever magic if you got magic or something like that, whatever you want to do. But if you want to use strength, um, you're talking about pushing it out or or trying to shove it to the side, Does it or, look or, like or, or or toppling it over or something. You don't know, you know. But I'm just letting you know. Right. Well, I've got my shovel. What if I stick it into that gap and try to just wiggle it, pry it, see if it does anything? Uh, it, no, uh, I, it, I, I also have a shovel, so we can we can both kind of do this. Yeah, it's just, just kind of sort of feeling how much give there is. Um, it you can get it in there, um, but it, uh, it it it's super heavy. I don't think anything would really move. Um, if you're just testing it, you know what I mean. Yeah, you're not yeah, yeah. you're not really putting a lot of force in it. It's not gonna. It, it's obvious that it will not just simply move. You you know you're gonna have to you're gonna have to apply some muscle to really to try it out. Okay. Why don't Why don't we both uh, on three just give it a mighty shove? Why don't we do that both on one shovel rather than you know, if we break it then we still we'll have, have a shovel. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna use that as well, more of like on- a. Cr- Crowbar, crowbar with torque, sort of thing, right? And in oh. fact, I think to get a little extra leverage, I have um, uh, some iron spikes, so we could yeah, like the iron spike under to give us more of a fulcrum to like. Okay, I dig it. Cool. All right, so you two, tell me what your strength bonus is, like to hit and damage. I have a plus one. Zero for for Argus. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so. I'm just this guy, you know, <laughs> just a guy. Yep. So I'm going to give you uh, getting the leverage with a shovel and um, with the iron spikes would uh, would definitely help. But it looks like it, and you, you're you like and you push as hard as you possibly can. Like you really try as hard as you can, but you just can't move it. 
Like it's just there's just no give at all. It it um, you just have a feeling that th you just don't have enough men or or just sheer manpower to do it. Um, uh, but you're fairly convinced that it's not nothing that's magical keeping you in a place. It's just you just don't have the strength. So mass. Should we slap Snell awake long enough to help us? <laughs> yeah. Um, what we need is a longer lever. What was uh, what what was Snell's status, by the way? Do you remember, like he was just fine, right? He was just sort of with he us. Uh, he he was down a few hit points. Yeah, he, he was he was. I don't I don't suppose anyone knows what his strength is, do you? I normally I would NPC cloud him, but in this case, I mean, if he's not doing anything else, there's no real reason he wouldn't help you. But um, uh, what I'm looking for here is actually like, and I can't. I'm not going to tell you how much, but I'm looking for a cumulative strength bonus. And I'm giving you a little bit extra for the leverage with the shovel and the pythons, but Snell has, a, Snell has a plus one. Is a plus one? Okay. Okay. So what yeah. I was gonna say is, what if we have a longer lever that allows greater force? Go get the halberd, for example, from the weapon room. Maybe that would do the trick. Want to break the fancy halberd? That we could sell. Well, I don't want to. Maybe one of those silver candlesticks. No, that. Or one. we could just go down the stairs and oh. see if our wizard buddy's okay. We could, let's get Snell's help. See if we can open this. And then, no. like you said, yeah, it didn't you, open. So let's go down. Uh, I don't really have a good excuse for why Snell isn't isn't doing something, but uh, um, so I don't know what he's been doing this entire time. But he, he's like, sure, I'll help you out, and he gives you he gives you a try. Uh, gives gets his weight behind it as well but unfortunately it's not enough it's it's super fucking heavy it's solid granite sorry guys i can't uh, help you out guys uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah he's, he's right. more he's more acting in a supervisory position <laughs> all right so i said we i, I said we go down the stairs i'm i'm back filled with I, back up your rope I got all my I got all my stuff, man. I'm I'm filled with glorious purpose. All right, yes, you are. This Indeed. is gonna go great. Yeah. Um, so Argus drags his feet, uh, propping himself up against the wall as you drag your ass back into the the circular room with with uh, your lady love uh, beholding the 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 tree lined archway down the staircase, um, and that sense of purpose once again does fill you, um, Halifax, as you take those first steps down. Uh, past that archway down the steps, you can feel like, yes, this is it. Yeah. Before I do, I like give a kiss, give a kiss to the ring, and like show it to her. Nice. Mark my words, Halifax. <laughs> I'm gonna die down here. And it's on your head. <laughs> uh, I will. This I will see point. that you get all of the rights that you de that you deserve. This is the point. This is right here. This was the this was the moment we made the bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember remember this moment. Okay, okay uh, this is it. All right. So, yeah, right I'm, I'm, John, I'm going to hit save before we <laughs> proceed. Right. Okay. You want to, I'll put this chapter title in the in the description, right? So you can actually yeah. go to this spot. Like, this is the point <laughs> where, <laughs> where bad decisions were made. <laughs> okay. Well, so, jumping into the, the spooky crack. That's, yeah, totally that's normal. Mark <laughs> yeah. Wizard, wizard repelling into danger. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so yeah, you, you make your way through the archway and once again, pristine past this point, right? Um, you've been this far. You kind of pass underneath the archway and kind of look down. Same exact thing. Uh, you were using torchlight now? Yeah. Correct? Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to say a, 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 another lantern, though. You could use the other lantern. You can, but you know what? That That's like. I think that's get digging too deep into the NPC cloud. Right? Yeah, I'm gonna, like he's got his. We're not going to use it. We've got torches. It'll be fine. Yeah, we should. Yeah, uh, a turn goes by so from from trying to open the door. And there, there are candles down there, right? Like as soon as we turn that corner, it's lit by the the creepy votives, right? Yeah, down at the base, right? So yes, there's all these uh, uh, ghostly candles, dozens of them that are floating in midair at the base of the steps, and you make your way down. Um, uh, and you can see that there is a vaulted chamber. When you get down to the lowest steps, you still haven't passed through the candles themselves, but over, uh, you know, beyond them, you can see that there is a large um, uh, room that's about the same size as, as uh, and shape as Sir Chide's tomb itself, right? It's circular. It's about uh, 25 feet circumference, or 25 uh, diameter. 
Oh, does the stairwell oh. feel feel that long? Like we traveled that whole distance? No, no. I'm just saying that the the, the relative sizes oh. are basically the same. Not necessarily that they are underneath each other. Um, filled with a shimmering pool from end to end. In the center, the statue is there, and once again, it is of the maiden. She's standing there with white, uh, made out of white marble, with long flowing hair and a robe, a star upon her brow. A different sort of pose than what is uh, up above you at the top of the steps, but it is definitely the same woman. Um, is there a dead wizard on it? Impaled or? <laughs> no, nope. Um, uh, although that is kind of weird, right? You would, you do what you can tell is this: it, this would be directly below the fissure, right? Based upon your I, map. It, I would call out, uh, Alfred, Alfred, right there. You see no other exits from the room except for when you look around to your right towards the east, you see another staircase that goes up. Oh, so we can see like the, oh, the one across the way. Oh, cool. We should take that corridor. You have not passed through or touched the candles that bar your way. It is impossible to get into that water without passing through the floating candles. All right. So I will uh, tell Argus. Okay. I feel, I feel like I've got the keys to this. I feel like this is the way. Ladies looking this way. This is the way to go. I'm going to shield on one arm. I've got the, the ring visible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to state right. that I, I am I'm I'm here on noble purpose. And if, if I'll, I'll turn around, I'm like if I if I don't come back, you can go around the other way if you want. Nope, nope, nope. I'm in for a penny. In for a gold piece. Uh, I'll tighten the straps on my shield, hold out my spear. I'll go in with you. All right, so, side uh, by uh, side. Step aside, candles. We we've we've uh, we've business. <laughs> All right, you pass through the candles, and as you are about, they kind of move gently, as if you're wading through water, like a side for you, as you kind of pass through them. And as you're about to step foot into the into the water, you actually feel a wave of like almost holy power like wash over you and everything goes white for a second as it, you do not step foot into water and instead you are transported into an ominous firwood heavy with snow cold like descends upon you uh, you immediately the first thing you sense actually is is the biting cold as you immediately start to shiver and then everything sort of coalesces uh, in front of your eyes and you see yourself in the land of Phrygia. Um, you are in the midst of a forest upon a very narrow path within that forest. Um, you can hear the cracking of wood uh, uh, being, you, you know, from the ice uh, that is coating everything, snow on the, fur, on the furs themselves. Off in the distance, probably about, um, you'd say about 50 yards or so, you can see peeking above the trees, the 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 pointed spire of a white tower. Um, the tower is fifty yards away, or the like the edge of the trees is fifty yards away. About yeah, the edge of the trees is about fifty yards away, and yeah. beyond them you can see this tower poking up. You can see that there is a trail of of obviously a sleigh, although you wouldn't probably make that connection immediately. Um, but you when you're listening to the trees crack and the ominous silence and the snow falling in the light snowflakes falling from the, from a sunlit sky, you can hear something creaking in the branches above you. And you look up and you can see that swinging gently from them are the, are uh, corpses that are covered with moss, uh, like a dark green moss and sap um, that are that, uh, at which the snow clings to as well and blotchy patches. They almost, Point at the corpses and look at Hallie and go, <laughs> this, this, this is what I was talking about. But they're, we're fine. The <laughs> For now. Your torch is still lit, but it, uh, it is uh, inconsequential now. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah, put it out and, and stow it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just glad you brought the tents because it looks really cold. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> we're going to die here. Put it, put it this way. If you're so, here long enough to, to camp, you're going to die anyway. So you are you are standing in the rutted track here, but the tra the path itself is actually, in, in the general force itself, you're in two feet deep worth of snow, right? Okay. It's that And it's that perfect, crisp, pristine snow that's untouched, right? 
okay, I'm I'm a li- I'm a little on guard. This is off putting. Like I I kind of like stage whisper. Alfred, are you here? Are you dead? Alfred. So um, Alfred, yeah, Alfred, you do not hear that. Argus, <laughs> Argus pulls, uh, uh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. well, Ian, if, if there's a, a one of these dangling uh, bodies, like make a listen check, please. <laughs> yeah, right. If there's one of these dangling bodies, kind of close enough to the trail that I don't have to go off the trail. Yeah, I want to give it a poke with the spear, and you know, is it is it an elf? Is it a human? Is Can it a, is it a tumnus? <laughs> it's a tumnus. Is it, it's a Mister Tumnus. It's it's difficult to tell. The whole thing is like coated in like uh, what seems to be like unnatural green moss and sap, um, but it's it's a rather bulky. Like you would say that it's 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 definitely like human sized, not slim. Right. Okay. You know, it's you, it could been be. There a while. It's been there a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Let's uh, let's let's gather our wizard, uh, get the ring to the lady, and uh, uh, be on our way. Okay. Didn't you say uh, something earlier about the lady did being? You guys out? turn around and see if you could find a way out. Oh yeah, what's behind us? Are we all still there? There's nothing behind us. I'm not even gonna turn around because I just know we're screwed. There's nothing there. Maybe a lamp post at best. <laughs> and a Mr. Uh what do you see? Let's see. Um, hold on. Make sure I get this right. I'm hoping that the purple slime will also float and we can ride it out. Oh, you do see that, by the way, like way off in the distance toward the tower, you see like that gash, that purple gash in the sky. It's very sort of off-putting. It's quite, quite, quite some distance away, though. Um, Connected. Yes. So you, you, you turn around and you do see that the the forest surrounds you, right? Like just like you're in a normal forest, it's all around you. But on the path directly behind you, you see that there is this patch of floating, dozens of floating candles. They're just right there. See, see, right there. That is good. And you were worried. I am worried still. Don't worry. This is going to be fine. Let's let's go find our wizard. My girlfriend a ring. Crap. But didn't you say earlier that the lady is actually imprisoned here? Like she's held captive by her father? In a tower. In a, yeah. Hey, so this it, isn't just an issue of giving her the ring, is it? That's all we would, that's all trying to ask us to, like, he didn't ask us to, like, free her or, like, you know, right? like, our I mission is maybe to, you like, never get went this to, to her. Maybe that's all it takes. People, people giving stuff to people in jail, they frown on that. I you had this uncomfortable cake. hunk of metal <laughs> up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I do not put the ring up my ass. I think you might it's need to. Same. Don't worry. I'm Come sure on, you guys just seriously just get get a move on. I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wizard shivering at the tower. So the ladies held prisoner in the tower, you said, right? Let's go yes, look at the tower. That's obviously where obviously forward where you go. Forward you go. And you move through the Holy forest. Cow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh you uh after after a, a little bit of time, you emerge out and it opens up before you, and you see that uh, there is a proxy wheel about 10 yards or so before of clearing of snow, of snow on the ground before there is this uh, lake, right? In the midst of this lake is this massive marble tower, as I described earlier to Alfred. And you can see that there is, um, you're following this path of this sleigh and you can see the sleigh and the stags actually standing in front of the door, um, laden with goods. And you can see in the shadow of the tower, just to the left of that sleigh a little while, you can see a very familiar looking <laughs> shivering form um, that is peering Rumbled around the corner. On the ground, dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you are amazed and delighted to see that it is none other than Alfric, who looks like he is up to some sort of planning or, or uh, reconnaissance of some sort. Uh, Alfric, when y- you immediately, because it's so quiet and deathly still here, the moment that they emerge from the forest, it's like your eyes are immediately drawn to the movement and you can see them emerge. I imagine yeah. we're quietly yeah. arguing about like this. No, that we gotta go yeah. this. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> um, to that tower. Are you insane? Off in the That's direction you came, why. you hear a loud caw of a crow or a raven of some sort. Oh, we hate those guys. Oh no! Man, and it sends shivers fire. down your spine from memory. But as you see emerging from the forest, it's actually a massive raven, but bright white, completely white. 
um, and it comes, uh, it, it comes uh, f- coursing through the through the fir trees and out onto the uh, out onto the lake and passes right overneath your head, kind of cocks its head down at, at all of you and sees you, and caws again, and then um, alights upon the sill of one of the windows about halfway up and pecks at the window. The sill, okay, well. uh, the the window opens. This frost flake sort of shaped window opens. Um, Alfred, you're like looking up directly up above, basically watching this thing, right? Um, uh, and you can uh, Argus and Halifax, uh, you can see from a distance from the edge here. Um, Alfred can't really make it out, but you see a uh, a slim, whitish blue hand just sort of emerge from the from the tower, and the the Raven just sort of pecks at it like uh, in a endearing, affectionate way and climbs up onto the hand and the hand sort of withdraws into the window and it shuts. And this was like a ground level window or? This is like midway way? midway up the tower. How tall is the tower? 100 feet? 1,000 feet? It's uh, three stories. Oh, 30 feet. Second, second story-ish. Yeah, second story-ish. Okay. Well, I don't think no. we're uh, going to be surprising anyone. No, probably not. We they they know we're here. That's okay. Let's so anyway, just, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We get up to Alfred. I'm like, oh hey, we've got, passed through many many miles of trials and tribulations, journeys untold, a great great adventure we've had to come find you and rescue you. He wanted to go yeah. get the tents. I told him that was a waste of time. <laughs> so there is an icky creature that was driving the sleigh. The sleigh is full of stuff that might be fun to have. I don't know where the icky creature went, but there's a big door right there. Pretty sure this is the tower where your where your uh, lady love is being held. It's a good bet. So you're on the uh, side of the tower. You uh, discussing this as you meet up. Happy to see that Elfrig is alive. When you hear yeah. the door open, yeah, we all hug. By the yeah, way, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Funnel for warmth. <laughs> the door opens. <laughs> all right, Grimble Gridge. Give me a second. I'll be right there. Let's gotta start loading this stuff in. You hear a voice, and then you see a uh, you see what is obviously a goblin of some sort uh, make his pounce his little uh, prancing way out of, of the door. Now, um, uh, goblins, uh, or at least the goblin that you're seeing here, just picture any of the goblins from Labyrinth. Okay, <laughs> that's the way the goblins are. They are Brian Froud style goblins right like they're, they're each one is, is distinct and unique they do not have any uh, uh uh similar features right they're all vastly different right um this one happens to be um, extremely short and squat with almost like a um the way i kind of picture them is uh what are those like those clay ovens people put in their put in their backyard not ovens but like heating things like those clay things Oh, uh, those little fire pits that are shaped yeah, like that. Yes, yeah, exactly like that, Ted. Those Chimineas. things. Chimineas, like a chimney. That's what they're called. I think that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. So he's got like a very sort of like wide midsection, but it's like narrows up to like a very sort of uh, narrow um, head. Um, but he walks on very short, stunted little legs that have massive, floppy little fle- feet, right? But they're booted, but they're mailed and booted. So he's like clank, clank, clank as he kind of comes out and he's like, bow, bow, you know. Um, and, uh, he makes his way. And he's got like big dangly wide arms, like white, much wider arms than he has legs. Right. Um, and uh, he, he basically, he kind of uh, nuzzles the noses of the stags who seem to, to like him. And he makes his way and he starts to unload a lot of that gear. Um, and they're big baskets of like what appear to be like fairy fruits and iced uh, fairy wine and, uh, uh, he is surprisingly strong. He's actually able to lug out this massive cauldron when she's like, oh, duh, eh, eh, and he's like, bah, bah, yeah, 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 making all these sort of noises. And the, the, the cauldron's like tipping and like a little, like, little bit of soup is actually like spilling out and melting on the ice. <laughs> Does he have any weapons on him that we can see? No. Nope. Oh. He can't see behind him while he's carrying that cauldron. Let's duck in behind him and sneak in through the door. There's no way we can sneak in. He's right, right, right there. Let's get. I, I think we should offer to help him. Yeah, I agree. Hail and well met. Nah. Wise master. Do, do, do you need some help uh, unloading your goods? Yeah, I gotta, I'll give you some help. Are you invited guests? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Grab something. Bring it in. Quick. Great. Okay. 
I'll nice grab job, a dude. stack of something and throw it over my shoulder. And yeah, uh, me too. So we all grab yeah. something from the from the sleigh. All right, so you uh, you carry some fruits and wine and stuff like that and bring it in, um, and you find yourself in uh, the entrance hall of this tower. Um, it appears to be bisected directly across the middle from east to west. So you're only you're like in a hemisphere of it, right? You're approaching the doors to the south. So you're basically in the southern section of this tower. Um, there is a, uh, it's there, there. So there's a number of garlands that are actually uh, uh, draped all over the place here. White roses, pale blue forget me nots that are kind of hung around the room in ribbons. Like it's actually decorated for like an event of some of some sort. There are dozens of winter hats and coats that are hanging from um, hooks all around the walls, like underneath these garlands, right? Like it's just a huge like coat room basically everywhere. There are um, boots and ice skates that are actually lined up delicately and neatly along like little shoe racks underneath the coats. Very, very civilized, right? Um, and there is a fireplace to your right along the, along the eastern wall that is uh, burning but it's burning, melting icicles with electric blue flames. Oh, but it is, but oh, it is, man. but it is actually providing warmth. Oh, okay. Um, you can smell an absolutely delicious aroma of freshly baked pastries and bread coming from the door that is uh, on the northern wall that is direct on the eastern near the eastern side um, near the fireplace, and you can hear that there are um, you hear muted. Voices coming from up the stairs, which are to the western side of this hemisphere. They go upstairs, but Here, dominating the entire room, uh -oh. um, causing you to step back as you sort of carry in these goods and almost make you drop them, is this massive, hulking, uh, humanoid sort of creature that has a, a large palanquin on its back. Like it's like basically like hunched over with massive, huge arms, right? Tiny and like little legs, like a like a cave troll almost, right? Um, but it's it's like hunched over with its head leg down, and it has like a howda on its back, and uh, kind of crawling up out of that howda and kind of resting its arms on top of it is another goblin with a big pot helm, right? That's like like huge, massive thing that's on top of its head. Um, on it, but he's got like a big spindly neck, but a huge head. Dark gray skin and warty and wrinkled and all that sort of stuff. And he's got like yellow beady little eyes and he peers over. His eyes are very similar to the troll that he's riding. Um, he's dressed in purple finery, velvet purple finery. Um, and he smiles like this snaggled tooth sort of grin at you as he sort of peers down and he kind of rests his arms on top of the head of this troll, right? And he's like, oh, well, 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 we have guests, I see. Excellent. Licorice, what have you brought us? I like, I found him outside. I mean, helping me bring stuff in. Where do you want this stuff? He goes, bring it into the kitchen, of course. Now, now. I know that these didn't come in with you, Licorice. These are guests from afar. Do you have invitations? No, uh, man. We come, we come as travelers by chance. Well, well, well. Yeah. Mark this down as the point where you made a bad. <laughs> <laughs> this point right here. Never lie to a fairy. He pulls out like from seemingly from nowhere, from behind in his howda. He pulls out like this long um, list. You know, like you know, if, if if we had an appointment, we'd be in the book. You know, and he, you know, <laughs> and he, and he, uh, he pulls out this long scroll that he pulls out. It's very much like um like the Chancellor in Wizard of Oz, right? Like you know, and he just looks at you expectantly, waiting for you to tell him. Well, if you don't uh, have an invitation, then I'm afraid you are not allowed to go up and enjoy the festivities. And you see, is it, he goes, isn't that right, Grimmelgridge? And he pats the shoulder of the of the troll that he's on top of, and Grimmelgridge like goes, Rrr. and he looks down. He like lowers himself down, almost like like a like a way a camel moves whenever it, like lowers itself, right? To, um, and it's like Rrr, and looks right at you. And a big pink Jabba the Hutt like tongue just. I see you have a, a very long list. Perhaps we're on it after all. I am Argus the Wolfbiter of Dreg. It's the Wolfbiter. Looking under A, no. D, no. 
Wolf Biter, maybe? And he goes all the way down to Toby. Nope. No August Dragger here. That's, and you, then you hear uh, uh, Grimblegridge. Huge, massive paws actually, you know, crack, crack, as he cracks his knuckles. You notice at that point, too, that there is a, he has got a bulging pouch at his side that is uh, so bulging that it's actually, uh, the contents are sort of erupting out of it. And it appears to be moss-covered human bones. Oh, this guy's not okay. Well, so while he's like he's sitting there talking, I'm gonna be like, "Oh, so busy, gotta get this stuff into the kitchen," and I just gotta keep on. Going. <laughs> 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 we, we don't want. We don't want to. We don't want to make. Uh, we don't want to. You know, make the festivities not have their party. No, we can't have that. Like, we're just like, yeah, let me help me get bring it into the kitchen. That's that's fine. He's like, it's totally absolutely fine. We need to get the the, the, the goods delivered. And he's like, Grimmel Ridge, back up, boof, boof, boof. Um, and allows you access to the kitchen. No going upstairs, though. No invite nope, to guests. Nope, nope. We're just delivery boys. We're just delivery I, boys. I no may have out. a uh, I may have a suggestion for you that I might be able to look the other way, but we'll talk about that later. Deliver the goods first. Okay. Unload the sleigh. Whenever he doesn't have his, uh, whenever he's not looking, looking at us or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm going to make several trips, carry small loads, right? And mm-hmm. I'm going to look for like a hat and a, and a, and a coat that are human sized. Uh, oh, not among the goods, but, but actually it's hanging there, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, yes. So it's all. As I'm, okay. As I'm walking out, if I size one up, I'm just kind of going to and take it out the door and then when i'm picking up my next load of shit i'm gonna put it on and then i'm gonna pick up another thing i'm gonna go into the kitchen uh okay cool um are you trying to do this like you're being deceitful or yeah i'm just gonna be like oh it's so chilly and i'm just gonna grab something and i'm like just gonna (laughs) kind of pretend that it's it's totally normal okay Are, are, are you on owlbear yeah Okay, so uh, do me a favor and roll me a d6. Okay. Open my dice thing. You can do it. Unclick the world thing so that it's there. <laughs> oh. What? He rolled a one. Oh. Yo, he rolled a one. No, you you know what game you're that's playing. Usually, that's usually good. Yeah, that's the good roll. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. yeah. Right. I knew a thing. I'm like waiting to see like a six and I'm like looking. I'm like, is, no, it looks good. It looks good to me. <laughs> All right. So All right, um, a little recipe from fifth ed. One is bad usually. <laughs> yeah. So you, um, yeah. So you are, you are able to surreptitiously sort of just right out the door, you know, grab, we'll grab one of them. Um, and uh, dress. So it does fit you, um, but it is a little tight. Not that you're, not that you're like a, a portly man or anything like that, but um, it's obviously meant for someone quite slimmer than you. In fact, the fashion, as you can see it, um, is uh, it's rather heavy. It appears to be lined with ermine, um, but uh, but it looks very regal. Like it's very, you know, haute couture, you know, sort of thing. He grabbed a um, lady coat, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but anyways, so uh, you are going to all go into the kitchen, I assume, then? Well, yeah, but this was actually yeah, oh, so. This was one of my trips back out to the sleigh that I did this. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Go yes. ahead. Yeah, so you were, you put that on. Yeah, so they don't seem to take it amiss that you're wearing that. They don't seem to really care. Um, but they're uh, licorice, and uh, you end up finding out the name of the goblin atop Grimmelgridge is Griddle Grim. <laughs> uh, as uh, you move into the kitchen, and you can see that in here. It's uh, quite warm. There's a lot of steam in the air, and of course, it's it's infused with this uh, this aroma of baking bread, right? Um, of and also the you smell spices here too, uh, currants and stuff like that. Um, and you see that there are two cooks in here, and these cooks, while rather short and rather stout, um, cannot be mistaken for anything but frost elves. So this immediately sends a shiver that is more than just cold down your spine. Um, even though all you're seeing is what appears to be menial laborers. Um, these are creatures that were things of myth. 
right, of legend um, that most pe- right thinking folk have dismissed as pure fairy tale. Um, and yet here they are in the flesh. Uh, they have pearly, pearlescent eyes that are like twinkling, um, blue skin that is uh, has a, a coat of frost on them on it, um, and they appear to be uh, going about their business efficiently, but they're also very, very flustered and stressed at the same time. And so they they barely look up at you as you enter. And they're like, "Yes, put down the goods over there, please. Thank you very much. Leave us in peace. We have lots of work to do. Much festivities. Thank you very much." There is no hint, no hint at all about like, oh, these are like like the same feeling that we we're having. Like, oh shit, these are. Oh, no. You don't get any of that vibes from them. They could care less what we are. Uh, no, they don't even they don't even look up from their cooking. They just assume that if you dare to enter, that you're that you're 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 there with good reason. So there is a there is a massive cast iron stove with a whole bunch of bubbling uh, pots on it. Uh, there's buns in the oven. Um, there's a huge chunky table yeah, with some flour, is. flour and pastry, <laughs> um, a pantry cupboard that has a bunch of tall shelves that are stuffed to the gills, like almost bursting open with like candied fruits and, uh, frozen hunks of game, um, and ice wine. There's the, another fireplace that has the crackling electric blue flames. Um, uh, all sorts of like just delights everywhere in the kitchen. Right. But it's obviously in the midst of preparation. But the smells are like intense. Like your mouth, your mouth just fills with saliva immediately. Are there any other areas of egress out of this kitchen besides the door we just came through? Uh, yes, there appears to be a door to a small door to the west. Okay, this would not be one that he saw on the outside. Uh, no, no. It's behind that wall that kind of bisects the the circle. Uh, no, so there's um, uh, we're, we're behind that wall now. You're behind that wall, so you're in the in the northern half of the tower right now, right? But there is a uh, this northern half appears to be further bisected by another wall, and in that wall there is a um, okay. there is a door. So the kitchen seems to be about a, a quarter of the size of the tower, correct? A little bit larger, but more or less, yes, correct. Okay. I'm going to be carrying my stuff and I'm just going to go to that door over to the West Mm -hmm. with my little hat and my coat on. And I'm going to open the door and see what's inside. Uh, So you open it up and it appears to be a, what appears to be the remnants of the tower is like a storage room, right? So there appears to be like a whole bunch of other pantries and foodstuffs and sorts like that, that kind of stuff. No other ways of egress. No, no, like no, there is a, there is a window. There's a window that leads uh, out. There's also a window in the kitchen itself and the numerous windows in the entrance hall back where you were. Well, he's back. checking. I think uh, I'd pick up that he wants to check that out and I'd try to distract them a little bit and be like, um, uh, what is this that you're preparing for? You seem so, so busy. I'm glad we could help, but... Uh... Of course, the wedding feast, you fool. Oh, who's getting... Who Who? who, who are the festivities for? Who's? Getting... <sighs> they they roll their <laughs> eyes, you know, and like they shake their heads and little pieces of frost sort of fleck out and actually spatter across your face a little bit. And they're like, why? Of course, it's the Lady Snowfall at dusk. Now, you hear the name of the maiden for the first time, Halifax. And like your whole mind just goes a reel, you know, as everything's just sort of like, like locks into place, just like, foom, foom, shung, shung, you know, it's, it's like the lady snowfall at dusk. She is mine. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything, everything just sort of makes I sense. Can't get labor out the groom. Well, now it's like, it, even though you were, you were, you were bent on this quest to, to find her, right. And give her the ring. And now there is a name attached to it, right. That's a, it's a big moment sort of. The lady snowfall yeah, at dusk. Um, yeah, he's he's uh, a a little a little bit stunned. The the lady snow she's to be married. Yes, today? she's betrothed. Why, of course. And it is to who, why? Who is her betrothed? The mortal so chide, of course. Every day is the is the wedding feast day for Lady Snowfall at dusk. They say as they like they merrily make their make their foods and prepare their wines. Now drop it off, yeah. scurry along. If you are guests, enjoy the festivities. Otherwise, be gone. Thank you. Okay, nice job, dude. Yeah. 
Go back out. Go grab another load of stuff. Ted, what do you want to do? Um, I've been grabbing stuff. I'll be following along, and I'm I'm uh, eyeballing um, the, the, the Grimmel, Gr Griddle Grim to sort of see uh, when he's ready to talk turkey about negotiating our way. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> As everything <laughs> everything gets loaded in, and Licorice um uh, basically like uh, tips his little uh, cap at at you guys, and like clanks off. You know. And he's like, thank you for the help. Not a problem, sir. Uh, and he, oh. he he goes off, and, and Griddlegrim is like, Grimmelgridge? He lowers himself down so that Griddlegrim is right at your um, at your level. And he's like, well, I have here a pouch. And he pulls out from his how to like a, a, a smaller pouch. Oh. And. You have a pouch? Look in here. And he opens it up. And you look in and you see that there is, within this pouch, there is a, a rainbow of different colored fungi. So many different shapes and sizes and pieces. And just all the colors of the rainbow. Beautiful looking. And he's like, if you sample one of the mushrooms in my pouch, I will allow you to go up and join the festivities. Um, that's a very generous offer. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll need an invitation. This is the yeah. moment, I said, where you make a bad <laughs> There's so, so many of these. <laughs> so, I, may I offer a counter offer? I have here, uh, and John, this is something I rolled up on in character creation. A, a It's a miniature brass gnome that appears on my pillow every morning. Mm hmm. And uh, I would be willing to offer it to him, this enchanted brass gnome. You have no use for junk like that. You take me for some collector of trinkets. I mean, it's pretty nice. It's pretty I'm, nice. Brass I'm, gnome. Doing it, I'm, I'm doing it. One, I'm doing it. One, <laughs> one fat finger actually like pokes into your gut, Argus, and you like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you just call him a moron? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Alfred wants a piece of mushroom. Yeah, okay. give me. Give yeah. Me, what are the different? Yes, yes, he kind of bounced it in his hand. What do you got going on here? Ah, oh, just any, <laughs> any is delicious. <laughs> Whatever you like. <laughs> I want that one that tasted like moldy cheese. I don't want that one again. They're all delicious. All products of Phrygia. Okay, I like. I'm, I'm gonna eyeball them. I'm gonna <laughs> randomly go in. I'm just gonna pick one out. Yeah, you are. <laughs> mouth and i'm just gonna eat it <laughs> hell yeah dude that's for the way come on uh, roll it roll a d12 please this is where wizard i get dies. How does a wizard die twice don't in forget the same episode? don't forget to um clear your previous dice roll before you, Are you what, what die did you say d12 a 12 sided yeah 12, 12 sided die <laughs> yes never, yes indeed in all my well years, ways to die. Die. <laughs> 1982 have I ever had a good roll on a 12 sided die? Really? They're the most fun to roll. Seven. That's pretty. Mm. Could be oh. good. Could be bad. Okay. Now, roll me a d6, please. Clear the, clear the die roll first. This is the number of limbs that fall off. <laughs> Wait. Or I'm going to get new limbs. The, the fun thing is, is whenever you guys end up watching this video, you're going to be able to see the chart that I'm rolling on and you're going to love it. <laughs> oh, two. I got I a two. Would never. I a would two. Never. Okay. Uh,. You shit, Alfred. Okay, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you you eat the mushroom, and you're like, mm. and it is pretty good. It is pretty good. It's like nothing you've ever tasted before. You could definitely tell it's definitely a product of fairy. Um, and as you as you swallow down your gullet, you see like uh, uh, Griddlegrim is sort of like right in your face, like the yellow eyes just sort of like mm -hmm, delicious. Yes, <laughs> well, well. Um, and you're looking around, you're like, I don't really notice anything different. And then you see everything sort of, you're able to analyze things just a lot e easier. Like you're taking in input and data and you're, cal you're, you're assessing it and coming to conclusions a lot quicker uh, about the situation that you're in right now. Um, you're pretty confident that you're making the right conclusions. So much so that you could almost say that your intelligence score actually raises by one. Forever, <laughs> <laughs> or just for like a day, or, or right now, now your intelligence is plus one. 
What does that make your intelligence? Hey, just think about it, man. You could have gotten plus one of your con. And you'd have a six. What, what's your intelligence? <laughs> could ruin our joke. Forget it. <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your intelligence right now? Con My five. intelligence just got up to a 16. Okay, so uh, you can mark that on your character sheet. Um, that was a completely random roll. Yes. Best 12-sided yes. roll ever. Mortal, you may join the festivities. Your friends, perhaps? Yes. And he's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a scholar mm -hmm. and a Look how happy your fellow <laughs> colleague is. I've enjoyed your company immensely. <laughs> I tickle the troll under his mouth and I go upstairs. <laughs> Argus? I knew I was going to die here. I might as well die at a party. <laughs> Extra limbs falling off me. Okay. Come on, man. That question never hurts you. Uh, so the, the little world symbol should not have the slash through it, right? That's correct. Yeah, that means you can you can see it. Hmm. I rolled a seven. Roll me a d6. Uh oh. Here we go. That is not a d6. It was a four, John. I, uh, uh, I forgot to right, right. Okay, four. Hold on. Okay. Uh, so. He's like, mm, yes, you feel anything? Yes. Kind of tingles? You do have some tingles. In fact, you feel lighter of step, as if you can dodge things more easily, perhaps. Perhaps loose an arrow more quickly or with more accuracy. You might almost say that your dexterity has raised by one. Wow. Oh, these mushrooms are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what does that make your dexterity? 13. Ah, very nice. Which I think it's worth a plus one, right? What's that? It's worth a plus one. Uh, I don't know. I have to look at the chart. Yeah, it is. Now you, one of the older, the oldest, the eldest of the group, yes? Don't want to miss the festivities, have, do we? You have I an invitation? Have, uh, I have uh, something much more important. I don't know what's happening. A desire to eat more mushrooms. More <laughs> than an invitation. What I have is a gift to the bride herself. I have a gift for Lady Snowfall at dusk. It must be delivered from me to her hand. She has everything she needs. What is this gift? Does she have the ring required for this wedding ceremony? <laughs> the eyes of the troll go wide, and he towers up to like his full bulk. And you see, like, uh, Griddlegrim is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, it's like, let me see it. Now he gets like very serious, like, all like the mischievous, uh, the, the mischief uh, in his eyes from previous, like, disappears. The ring, let me see it. You doubt my veracity? Of course I do. You are mortal. Tricksome you are. Yeah. As hmm. Sir Chide was himself, no? Her Show me the ring. Beloved. You're not here to converse. I will show you this ring that I must deliver. And he holds up his finger. <laughs> Is the ring upon the finger? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, his eyes go wide as well. So there's like two two pairs of yellow uh, yellow beady eyes like go wide. And they get they both get very, very quiet. And he looks at you and he just, he sort of gestures with one uh, long, elongated hand up the stairs. And he says, you are invited. Thank you kindly. May I have a mushroom for later? He, like the twinkle appears in his eyes. You want a mushroom? <laughs> you are more than welcome to take one, should you wish. I'll take one and have it for later. You gotta eat it now. Yes. You, want to eat it, man. you must eat it now if you want one. Uh, Otherwise, the chance is gone. Okay, what the hell? Oh, really? You sure? Why not? They, man? they both rolled. They both rolled sevens. I'm else. just saying. They, 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 it was a very slim chance that both of them rolled seven on a d12. They both did, but that doesn't mean you're gonna. <laughs> you doing it? Fine. I I am here upon glorious purpose. All I right, can, cool. I, can, I, can, I love you. Had the safe path up, and you're like, fuck it. <laughs> 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 All right. 
Well, we will end the session on this note. Let's see what happens to Halifax. It's, it's, it's got to be good, right? It's gotta, How can this possibly go wrong? All right, let's see what you bite into. All right, D12, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, here we go. It's going to be real good. See, it's a five. It's a five. What could possibly Perfectly, perfectly safe. Perfectly sound gentleman's five. All right, what is your... um? What what does uh what does your hairstyle look like right now? Like what do you, how do you picture your hair? Oh, um, shaggy, you know, not not well cut. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of a, a long. I, I don't think it's super great. I think it's kind of kind of a little bit of string to it. I don't think he's ever bought it's it. Sort of it's shoulder sort of shoulder length, sort yeah, of shoulder unkempt. Length, yeah. Okay, well, it is now no longer shoulder length. As you as the mushroom goes down your gullet you all visibly see his hair just start to like pour out just woof, woof. <laughs> just starts, just a <laughs> long it goes down his back and it, it's like crystal gale style like all, <laughs> all, the, all all the way down okay and as let's a just check as a tra as a trail beyond you as a trail behind you and you actually have to like part it you're like cousin it right like it like <laughs> It grows, your hair grows 10 feet long, Ooh. massive, all the way down. Um, and uh, you, you see, um, uh, I can't remember the names of them now. Who's who? uh, who's the, who's the, who's the troll? Uh, uh, Grimmelgridge, yeah. Grimmelgridge actually is like, he's like, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. And he like claps his big bitty paws. He's like, oh, ho, oh, oh. uh, ho, Then he actually pulls out a bone, like a big, like thigh bone. He's like, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. He's like enjoying the show, and uh, Griddlegrim is uh, laughing uproariously. And he's like, "It's excellent, excellent, good spirit, good spirits, excellent." I figure it's in the spirit of the occasion, right? Well, you will be, <laughs> yeah, you will, you will be a delight <laughs> to the guests upstairs. Now, off you go. Enjoy the festivities, you three. Behave yourselves. Remember, I have vouched for you. Um, uh, I will do this, and I take I take my hair and I kind of tie it around my waist like a belt. <laughs> nice, a hair belt. Love it. All right, cool. All right, and uh, you guys will uh, make your way up the stairs to see what awaits you on the second floor where you saw that pale hand except the white raven. Um, and we will pick up there next time. Uh, so, yes. yeah, pretty pretty sweet. David's going to be so pissed he missed a match. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God, yes. Yep, yep. I delight in much. Uh, honestly, though, no, it's probably a blessing in disguise. We'd have all died for sure if they were here. Yeah, how many, how many mushrooms do we think he would have eaten? Oh, my God. You keep telling me. You keep doing it until I told him no, of course. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yep. All right. David. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, all right, guys. That was uh, super fun, as always. Uh, so we'll pick up uh, next time with you going up the stairs to the second floor and seeing what the festivities hold for you. Um, so, uh, everyone, thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. You know the deal. Um, and we will see you next time for episode 12. Thanks again, guys. Have a great week. Take awesome. care. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, John. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.